graduation success rate of 93% is a testament to the unwavering commitment of our student athletes to their academics and future careers. On behalf of our student athletes, coaches, and staff, thank you for supporting the Pacific Tigers and for helping us continue our mission of building champions for life. College students, college athletes, all conference, all academics, all Americans, champions. Together we are able to make an impact for over 300 student athletes who are able to rise to these levels through the power of our community's loyal support every year. Together we are able to provide the resources to make a difference and build a future for Tigers who inspire us each and every day. Join the PAF today and become part of our Tiger family. For more information on the PAF and how you can help support Pacific student athletes, call 209 946 2591 or check the website at www.joinpaf.org and join the uproar. Be a part of the uproar this season. Limited ticket packages for Pacific men's basketball are available now and are a great way to catch all the action in 2019 20. Can't make all the games? Call us at 209 946 2474 or go online to pacifictigers.com and learn about partial ticket plan options. It's the best way to catch all the best games at the lowest price. This is Damon Stoudemire, head coach of your Pacific Tigers. It's never too late to join the uproar. Season and partial ticket plans are available by calling my friends in the ticket office at 209-946-2474 or by going online to Pacific Tigers. Dot com. We would love to count on your support this season. Buy your tickets today at PacificTigers.com or by calling the ticket office 209-946-2474. Tiger fans, check out PowerCat's brand new Tiger Cubs, the official kids club of Pacific Athletics. Kids receive free admission to select games, a Pacific Tigers fan package, and access to special events with many of our teams, all for the low price of just $20 per child for a one-year membership. Visit www.pacifictigers.com slash tigercubs today to sign up. This is Bradley Davis, head coach of your Pacific Tigers. Become part of our team today and support your women's basketball program by joining an elite group of friends, family, and supporters who are part of our inner circle, known as the Center Court Club. This is your opportunity to join our team and get insider access that will support the program to compete against and beat the best in the country. Join Center Court Club today and become part of the Tiger family by calling 209-946-2591 or check the website at www.joinpaf.org. Unmatched passion. Incredible power. This trophy is not given. It must be earned. The National Collegiate Men's Water Polo Championship. December 7th and 8th at Chris Coates and Pool Complex in Stockton, California. Right on the front doorstep, punches it in. Season opening and lets it fly. Visit NCAA.com slash tickets and get your tickets today. Community service is an integral part of Pacific Athletics with many of our student athletes, coaches, and staff committed to giving back to both the campus and surrounding community. On any day of the week, the Tigers are making a difference in the lives of others and broadening Pacific's role as a community partner in Stockton and the region. Last year, the Pacific Tigers engaged in 2,000 hours of community service. If you'd like to make Pacific Athletics part of your community event, go to PacificTigers.com, click on the Community tab, and submit your request. Let us be a part of your uproar. Courtside inside the Alex G. Spano Center, Zach Bayrudy, Coach Bob Thomason. Glad to have you with us. We are moments away from the opening tip, the Pacific Tigers and the UC Riverside Highlanders, old Big West foes. And the starting lineup for the Tigers are about to be introduced to the crowd here at the Spano Center. Uh, let's give you both starting lineups, and we'll start with UC Riverside under second year uh, head coach David Patrick, who had been at LSU. And his starting lineup is as follows. It is Dragon Elkaz, Kai Cabellis, our old buddy, grad transfer to Riverside, Dominic Pickett. Callum McRae, who is their seven foot one center and leading scorer. And also George Wilborn, who by the way is six foot three and is leading the team in rebounds, averaging just under 10 rebounds a game. That's pretty, that's pretty good, coach. 
Well, he definitely has a nose for the ball, and he probably has a toughness to go after the ball. Again, for Riverside, Elkaz, Cabela's, Pickett, McCray, and Wilborn. For the Pacific Tigers, under fourth year head coach Damon Stoudemire, Jaleel Tripp, Austin Vereen, Amari McCray, Brock Finstoon, and Justin Moore. Again, for the Tigers, it'll be Tripp, Vereen, McCray, Finstoon, and Moore. The second straight game where we will not see Danis Jenkins in the starting line, but lineup, but rather Danis will be coming off the bench. So again, Tripp, Vereen, McCray, Finstoon, and Moore. This is the second of seven straight home contests for the Tigers. Uh, the Tigers will next play on Tuesday here versus Coppin State. That'll be a 7 p.m. opening tip. And then a big one uh, on Saturday. The Tigers welcome Boise State. That'll be a 4 p.m. matinee and should be very well attended. Uh, Tuesday, the 26th of this month, SIU Edwardsville comes to town. Friday, the 29th, Longwood is here. And then rounding out this seven-game homestand, if you will, December the 4th, Cal State Fullerton comes to town. And the Tigers' next trip will be to Southern California at Long Beach State on December the 7th. Meanwhile, UC Riverside headed home after this game. Uh, they've been in Northern California for a couple days now. They're coming off of a loss at Sacramento State on Friday, 62 to 49. And uh, they obviously did not have a good offensive performance uh, in that ball game at uh, Sac State. It was their first loss of the season. Uh, so they're looking to rebound and uh, get back to their winning ways here today. They had been 3-0 and prior to that loss at Sacramento State. Sac State can be kind of a funky place to play, too. It's kind of a, a smaller sweat box of a gym. Uh, I, don't, I don't think a lot of teams get up to play there. I'm not trying to make excuses for Riverside, but it's not an easy place to go and play. No, and, and Sac State probably was well prepared for them, and, and uh, sometimes you, you don't bring your best effort. You get beat. You know, Brian Cass does a great job of preparing yeah. those guys defensively and offensively, and, and it sounds like they had complete control of that game all the way through it. The team's making their way to center court. The Tigers wearing the home white unis, Pacific written in black, block letters outlined in orange across the chest, black numeral outlined in orange on the front and back of the jersey, the last name of each Pacific player on the back of the jersey, and black, white shorts, black trim. UC Riverside in royal blue jerseys. Highlanders written in blue script outlined in gold across the chest, a gold number on the front and the back of the jersey. The last name of each Highlander player written in gold block letters above the number on the back of the jersey. And blue shorts with uh, some interesting trim down low. Looks like the uh, the mountains of Southern California kind of at the end of the short. And the tip is up. It is won by McCray and UC Riverside. And the Highlanders move from our left to our right from our vantage point on the far right side of press row next to the Tiger bench. They get Kai Cabellas a shot from the right wing. He passes it up, swinging around to the left wing. This is Dominic Pickett. Pickett back up top to Elkaz. Back on the near side to Cabellas. Kai dribbles it to his left at the top, drives left of the lane, slings it back out to George Wilbon. Uh, Wilborn, I beg your pardon, and he's going to be fouled by Austin Vereen with seven seconds on the shot clock. I, you know, listen to the pregame. You know, they're going to try to force him to drive. The only thing I worry about is getting in foul trouble. You so know, getting in foul trouble. That's the only thing I worry. Sometimes you get too tight worrying about taking away the perimeter, and you foul guys off the dribble. And the Tigers, prior to that foul, were playing good defense. It's Elkaz on the right wing. Elkaz holding over his head, 10 to shoot. Give it to his left to McCray. McCray dribbles one time to his left, hands it off to Wilborn. Wilborn's going to launch a three, and it's off the right side of the rim, and the rebound falls to Justin Moore. And the Tigers have their first possession of the afternoon, moving from our right to our left. Moore in the front court on the left wing, hands it off to Brock Finstoon. Back to the left wing, he passes to Jaleel Tripp, standing on the arc. Up top to Finstoon, right wing to Vereen, dribble handoff to Moore on the far right sideline. 12 on the shot clock, Moore drives into the right elbow, now into the key as Moore stops a dribble. Gives it down low to McCray, who goes up on the left hand and gets two. Amari McCray gets the Tigers go. Yeah, he, just, he got right to his left hand and made a nice little jump hook. Into the front court, Kai Cabellas, his hair a little bit longer than we remember. Still has that fade haircut, but the hair up top is a little longer. Great to see Kai's parents before the game here as well. Such great people. Pickett up top, pivots off his right foot, now dribbles and drives left of the lane. Stops, puts up a tough 13-foot fadeaway. It's no good. Wilborn, though, with the rebound. There he is, averaging about 10 a game. Out it goes to the left wing to Pickett. The Highlanders got a reset with Cabellas. Cabellas chest pass to the right wing to Wilborn. Wilborn dribbles to his left off his screen, gives to Cabellas. He launches a deep three and switches it through, and that's got to feel good for Kai Cabellas, and he gives UC Riverside their first points and a 3-2 to two lead. Into the front court goes Moore, hands it off to Vereen, dribbles one time up top to Finstoon. Brock holding off to his right, now to his left. Chest pass to Moore, curling to his right. He's at the left elbow. Tough fadeaway from the left elbow, no good. 
Rebound is loose, controlled by Dominic Pickett. Pickett streaks into the front court. No numbers for Riverside, so he'll just slow it up. Gibbs Cabellas left wing for three, and that's nearly an air ball. Two vastly different shots we've seen from Kai Cabellas driving into the paint more. Kicks it out to Finstoon. A right corner two, a long two will rattle out. The two bounces off of the rim, and a foul is that's going to be called a loose ball foul. Right there. I mean, trip foul, 94 feet. On, when a guy already had the rebound. It was McCray. Oh, was it McCray? Yeah, it was McCray. So that's even worse because, as you say, Coach, you always like to say if you're a big man, you're going to get two to three fouls a game just because of where you're playing. Yeah, so you get one every ten minutes, so you have seven minutes to go without taking another one. Three to two, Riverside. Cabela's on the right wing, up top to Wilborn. Wilborn dribbles to his right, stops the dribble, gives it out to McCray, who dribbles one time to his left. Looking for a dribble handoff, it's not there. He gives instead to Wilborn at the top of the circle. Good defense by the Tigers here, 10 to shoot. Cabela's up top. Kai dribbles off a screen to his left. Kai slings it down low to McCray. McCray contacted by Jaleel Tripp, and McCray does not make the shot. He, he, he needs to take his time. He kind of rush it with the bump, you know, physical. Just take your time, count to two, and then finish the play. Baseline left to Mari McCray, shot fake. He's got to dribble in, angle to the bucket, put it up, and leave it short. The rebound taken by McCray. It was Amari McCray with the shot, Callum McCray with the defense and the rebound. No relation, obviously. Callum from Australia dribbles to his right, hands it off to Wilborn. Wilborn inside the right wing. Up top to Elkaz. He takes a three, and Ooh, it's good. Tough shot there. It's going to be interesting to see if the Tigers can sustain their effort on defense because they're putting so much pressure on defense right now. Well, they, if they're going to play defense for like 30 seconds every time down the court, we'll see how they can sustain that throughout the game. Dragon Elk has now 6 of 16 on the season from beyond the arc as Finstoon gets to the bucket, forces a shot that wasn't there and didn't go anywhere. Great defense by the big fella. Craig did a great job putting his hands up. Cabela scoots through the defense and lays it off the glass and in it. A great start here for Kai Cabela's, and that's the last thing the Tigers wanted to see. You don't want him getting going. There you have two things. One is how good he is, but two, the momentum of the moment. Well, Cabela's has five of the eight Riverside points, and it takes us to a timeout on the floor as the Tiger bench called a timeout, stretches to the media. Coach T and I take it as well. 16-11 to go just underway in the first half. It's UC Riverside 8, Pacific 2, and we're back after this on the Pacific Digital Network and the W.TV. All conference, all academics, all Americans, champions. Together we are able to make an impact for over 300 student athletes who are able to rise to these levels through the power of our community's loyal support every year. Together, we are able to provide the resources to make a difference and build a future for Tigers who inspire us each and every day. Join the PAF today and become part of our Tiger family. For more information on the PAF and how you can help support Pacific student athletes, call 209-946 2591 or check the website at www.joinpaf.org and join the uproar. This is Damon Stoudemire, head coach of your Pacific Tigers. It's never too late to join the uproar. Season and partial ticket plans are available by calling my friends in the ticket office at 209-946-2474 or by going online to pacifictigers.com. We would love to count on your support this season. Buy your tickets today at PacificTigers.com or by calling the ticket office 209-946-2474. Zach May Rudy, Coach T, courtside at the Alex New Spano Center. Great to have you with us. On a Sunday afternoon in Stockton, it is 8-2 UC Riverside. The Highlanders off to a fast start, and the Tigers will dip into their bench. Pierre Crockrell, Danis Jenkins, James Hampshire on the floor for Pacific. Also, Jeremiah Bailey is out there as Pacific are right to our left. They're in the front court. Crockrell has it top of the circle. Pierre bounce pass to Jenkins at the left elbow, passes up the shot, gives it back to Pierre, drives near the baseline, puts a floater up, and gets two. Tough shot. Tigers needed a bucket, and they get one, badly needed. It's eight to four, UC Riverside, as Cabela's takes it across center court. Cabela's dribbles to his left toward the left wing, stops the dribble, and gets a backdoor cut on the baseline. It was Pickett with a backdoor cut, tried to feed McCray in the lane, and it's stolen as Danis Jenkins out in transition. His shot blocked by George Wilborn. What a block by Wilborn, who plays much bigger than the 6'3 that he's listed. 
Pickett stops in the key, gives to Cabela's top of the circle. Kai dribbles to the far left sideline. Here's a bounce pass to McCray. McCray left of the lane, ball fake, dribbles it in. McCray looking to go over Hampshire, two seven foot one Giants, and McCray trying to put it over Hampshire, and the shot went nowhere. Tigers have the loose ball as Crockrell in the front court dribbles to the baseline left and then pulls it back out. You see Riverside eight, Pacific four, under 15 and counting to go in the first half. Crockrell hands to Jenkins in the high front court. Now to Jaleel Tripp at the point. Tripp bounce pass left wing to Crockrell, dribbles it to his right. Crockrell guarded by Cabellas with nine to shoot. Eight, seven, Crockrell still with the dribble, drives it in. Crockrell lobs it for Hampshire who misses the catch and lay in, but he gets his own loose ball and goes up and gets fouled. That was a really nice pass, McCray. that was a really nice pass. It should have been a finish for the big fella. Beautiful pass by Crockrell, as coach just mentioned. He lobbed it and it was it's, to the lower right block it, thereabouts. And James just kind of rushed it, you know, on the bank rather than just catch your time and finish it up. That was a good pass. You want to bounce balls to the post guys or you want to lob them to the post guys. What you don't want to do is shovel straight passes because the, their hands aren't good enough and kind of surprises them. Plus, the defense can deflect them. Hampshire's first one is up and short. UC Riverside dips into its bench for the first time. It's going to be Angus McWilliam and DJ McDonald on the floor for UC Riverside. You do it differently than everyone else, but I do it that way. Like where you just say who's coming in now, they don't have to be like for certain people. Riverside has four guys from either Australia or New Zealand, so they kind of have that, uh, you know, St. Mary's pipeline kind of well, thing David going Patrick if you will. worked for at St. Mary's, so he was the guy that started for Randy. So he's from Australia, I think, so he knows that area very well. I say that because Angus McWilliam is from Christchurch, New Zealand. Again, he's on the floor for the first time. As on the left side, it's Elkaz. Elkaz gives to his left to Cabellus. Kai dribbles to his right, takes a three, and it's off the mark, and the rebound taken by Jeremiah Bailey. On ahead to Crockrell up the far right sideline. Crockrell cuts it to his left. He's at the top of the circle. Chest pass to, Denkins, uh, J to uh, Jenkins on the left wing. Give it left corner to Bailey. Shot fake off the dribble. He drives. Has the ball stripped loose, but he gets it back. That was probably good they got it stripped loose. It looked like he was going to try to shoot that ball. Crockrell has it now baseline right. Pierre slings it in the lane to Hampshire. Goes up with a left-hand baby hook. It's no good. He gets his balance a little more. Kind of rushed it. But they've hit uh, James Hampshire now at close range a couple of times. You've got to figure it's going to pay off eventually. Cabellus on the right wing. Gives it up top to Wilborn. Wilborn chest pass to the far left side to Elkaz. Up top to Cabellus. Kai pivots off his right foot. Drives to his right. Cabellus stops. Gives it out to McWilliam. He takes an open three. It's around the rim and out. Riverside eight, Pacific four. The Tigers have it, and Crockrell at the top of the circle gives to Jenkins or tries to. Cabellus knocks it loose. He's out all by himself, and Cabellus lays oh, it up and missed it. Oh, my goodness sake. He had two trailing Good defenders. Good effort by the defense. Two trailing defenders, and now an alley-oop lob from Danis Jenkins yeah. to James Hampshire. Four-point play right there. Cabellus had two defenders right on his heels, breathing down his neck. He's still got to finish that, though. Yeah, you got to finish it. It went around the rim and dropped out. Kai Cabellas, who anticipated the steal beautifully, and that's a big swing, not only in points, but perhaps momentum as well. Riverside 8, Pacific 6, Tigers on a little 4 0 run. Wilborn, shot fake from the right wing, jabs to his right, dribbles to his left, spin move right of the lane, bounce pass out to the right corner to McDonald for three, and he knocks it down. That's he where you don't want to help. If they're going to try to stop the three, you don't want to help on that guy, make him score. And they're helping, and they gave up a three. DJ McDonald, 41% from beyond the arc on the young season through four games for the Highlanders. Crockrell inside the right to wing will dribble it out. Now Pierre gives a chest pass to his right to Jenkins. Curling to his left, Danis had the ball pried loose, but he gets it back, lobs it out to Bailey. 10 to shoot, Crockrell has it left wing. Pierre knifing through the defense. Crockrell goes up with a right hand, shot off the glass, no good. And the rebound taken by Riverside. Hampshire had a paw on it, but couldn't clamp yeah, it. Yeah, his effort was good. I thought the shot was kind of questionable. Cabellus behind the back dribble at the right elbow, driving through the lane, kicks it out left wing to Elkaz for three, and that's He has a great look shot right there. And Elkaz has made a couple here. He is two of two from beyond the arc. And with that, it's 14 to six Riverside, 11.50 and counting to go in the first half. Jenkins in the high front court gives to Jaleel Tripp. Tripp bounce pass to Crockrell on the left wing. Crockrell dribbles to his right, gives a bounce pass to a cutting Jaleel Tripp who gets to the 10, puts it off the glass. Great end. pass in there, good finish. He took his time, went off both feet. Tigers could use Jaleel Tripp to come to life. It's 14-8 Riverside. 
Cabellus across the Power Cat logo at center court, dribbling to the near right wing. Kai hands it off to McDonald, up top to Elkaz. Left wing to Wilborn. Wilborn guarded by Tripp, up top to Cabellus. He's going to take a three, and it's around the rim and out. Another close call for Kai. He's had two of them look like they're going to go. Tigers have the miss. Now Crockrell zings into the lane to Hampshire. Hampshire pivots around a defender, took lays it time. up and in. You know, he kind of fumbled a little. He just took his time, got his balance, and then finished. Great I, job. I have been impressed this season on the young season with James Hampshire. And Hampshire has four points, and he's had a couple of close calls, too. They've found the big man down low for a couple of uh, decent looks. 14-10, Riverside. Cockrell keeps on passing to him right at the basket. They're, he's going to have a good game. Trying to get it down low to McCray, stripped and stolen by Jaleel Tripper. That was uh, McCullum they were trying to hit. Now Crockrell on the right to elbow is going to drive it in, force oh, one up. It's no good, lucky, but he's going to be lucky. bailed out with a foul called on Riverside. And Didn't it's like going to that be on shot at all. Didn't like that shot, even though he ended up getting fouled. It's going to be on Kai Cabellas. He's played well, though. Cockrell's played well so far. So a timeout on the floor comes with 10.36 to go in the first half. Our score from Stockton. The UC Riverside Highlanders 14, the Pacific Tigers 10. Coach T and I are back after this on the Pacific Digital Network. This is Bradley Davis, head coach of your Pacific Tigers. Become part of our team today and support your women's basketball program by joining an elite group of friends, family, and supporters who are part of our inner circle, known as the Center Court Club. This is your opportunity to join our team and get insider access that will support the program when you walk to compete against campus, and beat like the best in the country. It's almost one of those campuses Join where everybody kind of smiles at each other. It's just welcoming. Everybody's so welcoming. I feel like I'm coming home. One of the big strengths of Pacific is the small class sizes. I feel like I know all of my professors and that they know me. I hear stories all the time from people at the big brand name schools and how they wish that there was more personal interaction. I really like the environment that I felt at Pacific from like the first day at the Stockton campus. I just really felt like the professors actually knew who I was. It's family to me and I can hardly wait to get up in the morning and get in my car and come over here and then see my friends, my colleagues, the students. They become family to me. The students know that we care, that they matter in the classroom and we know each of them by name. We realize that our first responsibility is to our students and we have always taken that responsibility very seriously. So our first responsibility is teaching, our second responsibility is scholarship, not the other way around. Here. 10.36 to go in the first half. Zach Bayrou, Coach Thomason, and UC Riverside leading Pacific 14 to 10. Checking the early percentages, uh, the Tigers are five of 13 from the floor, not great. UC Riverside is actually worse, five of 14 from the floor, but Riverside, four of their five makes have been threes. Well, Tigers want to take away threes, and they haven't done it so far, they're four for eight. Help a little too much. I thought one time uh, when Riverside turned the ball over, they tried to get to the big guy, and the, and the shooter, Elkins, was wide open in the corner. If they would have threw it to him, they might have had another three. Tigers are going to get some subs in as uh, Pierre Crockrell is at the line. And he missed the first one. Second one is up and good. So Crockrell, one of two from the line. Jabril Price Noel, Shaquille Fritz, Gary Chevichian are on the floor for the first time for Pacific, along with Crockrell and Jeremiah Bailey. So none of the starting five out there right now for Pacific as UC Riverside goes to its bench as well. Zach Watson in the game and on the left wing, holding the ball down low, dribbling to his left and then spinning it back to his right, Zylon Poland. Poland gives it down low to McCray. McCray gives a skip pass out to the right wing and now to pick it up top. Pickett drives in off the dribble. Price Noel is on him, goes up over Fritz or tries to and Fritz partially blocked it and a shot clock violation. Well, good defense, Shaquille Fritz getting his hand way up there. And Shaquille standing at six foot eight, able to partially block it. He has really good defense. Price Noel, baseline left, will inbound to oh. Moore, and some backcourt Come pressure on. creates a turnover as Zylon Pullen got the loose ball and then went up and got fouled. Moore, first of all, you got to be ready for a press. Number two, take your time. There's no five second count in the backcourt, so you just take your time to see who he can pass the ball to. And uh, the fouls on Jabril Price Noel. Now Moore was the guy a couple of games ago in Hawaii who had that cough up near midcourt, so the pressure may be getting to him a little bit. Well, he's probably surprised by the trap, but 
and you think the guy inbounded it, you can throw the ball back to him usually, but they went over and cut him off, so you just got to take your time. Second one is both no free good. Throws missed. And both free throws no good, as Coach just mentioned. And Well, Tigers dodge a bullet there as into the front court, Javician on the right wing up top to Bailey. Dribbles one time, hands to Javician, dribbles to his left. Gary hands it off to Moore. Moore is going to knife through the defense, get to the baseline left, put it up off the glass, no. Off the mark, and the rebound taken by UC Riverside. Up the far left sideline goes Zylon Pullen, the freshman from Pleasant Hill. He's going to hand it off to Pickett. Dominic Pickett dribbles to his left, uses a head fake, gives it far side, almost out of bounds to Zach Watson, but he's able to save it and get it back in the high front court to Pullen. 13 on the shot clock. Pullen dribbles through the key, gives it to McDonald on the right wing. Nice crossover move by McDonald. Goes up over Fritz, high off the wow. window, and gets two. Good, good defense by Fritz to come over there and challenge that shot. That was a tough shot. Yeah, uh, the Tigers made DJ McDonald run the gauntlet to get that shot, and he did, even to the very end where he had to get it over 6'8", Shaquille Fritz. Up top, Chavichian dribbles to his left. Shot fake from inside the left wing. Gives it to Fritz. And now trying to get it to the far side to Price Noel. I've been pretty impressed away. with Riverside's defense so far this game. I mean, they've given up a couple passes for lobs inside, but their effort's been good. Their team's been good. They've been playing good defense. It was knocked away. I'm not sure who got the hand. I think it was, uh, I know who it was. It was Zach Watson got his hand on it. Out of bounds on the far side, so it'll stay with the Tigers. 12 on the shot clock. Amari McRae checks back in for Shaquille Fritz. Price Noel is going to lob it into McRae. McRae dribbles one time. Hans Javician moving to his right. And now on the right wing to Moore. Jab step to his right. Dribble to his left. Crossover back to his right. Five to shoot. Moore up with a running right hand hook. It's no good. Not a good shot. And in the backcourt, it's going to be another foul on Amari McRae. It is. McRae. He nearly tackled, I think it was uh, DJ McDonald, and that's the worst thing that could have happened right well, there. Well, McCray's got to be aware of where he's at. The guard just crossed over. It's not like he went way over and got in front of him, but you got to see where he is and just stop. You know, just stop. you got to avoid that foul at all costs. Now he comes out of the game for the, maybe until half. Yeah, that's the second personal on McCray, and both fouls have been about 80 feet from the hoop. Our left to our right, Zylon Pullen, the freshman from Pleasant Hill, into the front court at the far left sideline. Pullen is on the left wing. Pullen looking to enter, being denied, gives left corner instead to Elkaz for three. It's no good. And the rebound pops out some more, and a whistle stops play. Oh, they're going to give a flop warning, the old flop warning to Dragon Elkaz, and that should be a free throw, right? See, I think, see, I think that's the right way to See, that, that you're supposed to do a warning. I think they gave a free throw last week, not understanding that. That's the third time, as they're not going to shoot a free throw. It's the third time we've seen that rule enforced, and it's been enforced differently three times as the Chavitri well, takes a three. Well, the fourth time they might get it right, huh? I, I don't know even, even know what to expect Would anymore. it be that hard to make a statement what it is? I would love to know, because I've seen it enforced differently three separate times as again Chavichian with a three draws the Tigers to within two as in the right corner shot fake by Pickett Pickett drives it in and said gives it out to Elkaz gets it down baseline left to Watson Watson gives it back out for a three that is no good DJ McDonald fell backwards as he shot couldn't get it to go and now Moore has it in the front court on the left wing Moore is going to take an 18 foot pull up and knock it down Great screen right there by Noel. It's a great screen. I think in transition, when you said screens, people are surprised. It really is effective. Meaning they're not they're not expecting you to set a screen that early. In that the early sequence. in the fast break, you know. We used to like to set a lot of screens. Right wing, it's Pickett. Give it up top, and the ball fumbled by McDonald. Stolen by Chevichian, and there's going to be a foul called. Good active hands on right there. DJ McDonald. And... Uh, that's going to take us to a timeout on the floor here from the Spano Center. This timeout comes with 7.27 to go in the first half. Our score, Pacific 16, UC Riverside 16 on the Pacific Digital Network. I've always wanted to come here since I was little. And I remember I would pass by here when I was younger. We would come and take pictures or come for tours when I was like in middle school. And I was like, wow, this is amazing. I, I was just in shock by the buildings themselves and the history of UOP and, and the people within it. It was just a beautiful place that I dreamt of.
I thought maybe one day if I work really, really hard and I'm good, I'm truly good at what I do, I might be able to get in and I'm here and I love it. Hi, my name is Lila Valencia and I'm a fine arts major here at UOP and this is my art studio. Pacific 16, UC Riverside 16. Zach Beirudi, Coach Thomason, glad to have you courtside with us. 7.24 to go in the first half. And Justin Moore is in the front court. Riverside had a decent sized lead uh, in this game. Their largest lead, Riverside's, was uh, eight points. Tigers have not led since they took a two nothing lead as Moore gets to the key, takes a 16 foot pull up, it's short. And a rebound clamped down by Zylon Pullen. Our left to our right, Pullen goes into the front court, gives it on the left wing to Wilborn. Back up top to Pullen. Pullen dribbles to his right, slings it back up top to Pickett. Pickett chest pass to the left wing to Wilborn. Wilborn drives to baseline left, tries to go up and lost it out of bounds. They're going to say it was last touched by Pacific. So 13 seconds on the shot clock. For the Tigers, Jaleel Tripp and Austin Vereen are back in the game. Jeremiah Bailey, Jabril Price, Noel have a seat. Baseline left, it will be Pullen. Pullen holding over his head. Pullen looking to lob it in somewhere, gets it to McCray, left corner. Eight to shoot, and now seven. Up top to Pickett, who drives it in, going downhill, puts it high off the glass and in, and the Tigers just gave Pickett too much room that to That was a nice left-handed floater, though, off the backboard. Under six and a half to go in the first half. 18-16, Riverside. Tripp hands it off to Javici and dribbles to his left. Gary takes a long three, swish. You know, they've been switching the perimeters, and that guy didn't switch at that time. He was out late. You never want to miss a switch on a good shooter. Tigers have a 19-18 lead. Their first lead again since it was 2-0. Left corner driving in is Wilborn. Wilborn gives it out to Pickett right wing. Chest pass up top to Elkaz. And further left it goes to Pullen on the far left sideline. Pullen dribbles to the wing. Now to the baseline. Pullen spins it back out. Terminates the dribble. Has nowhere to go. But gives a bounce pass across the way to McCray who puts pass. it up and in. That, that should have never happen. I mean, Fritz got to be in between the man and the ball and knock that down. I mean, the dribble was terminated on the baseline by Elkaz, and now Chavichian feeling it takes a right wing three. No, Vereen elevates for the rebound, and he's pushed in the back. And it's going to be Elkaz with the push in the back. But I mean, if you if you have a guy that's terminated his dribble on the baseline, he's essentially trapped. You can't allow him to, to pass, especially well, in the lane. Not, not only the guy guarding the ball, but the guy guarding the man. He got he got above his man, so the pass went to him. He got to be below his man, so that can't happen. That pass shouldn't be able to happen. Baseline left, it is Moore inbounding to Javici in left corner. Javici gives it on the left wing to uh, Justin Moore, who dribbles it to near midcourt with 14 seconds on the shot clock. Moore drives to his left, now to the right elbow. Moore crosses over, drives to baseline right. Left his feet, nowhere to go. Gives to Javici in left corner for three. It's an air ball. Loose ball is gathered in by Zylon Pullen. Austin Vereen had a chance to get the loose ball, but had it slip through his paws. Dribbling to his left is Pullen. Pullen stops left of the lane, kicks it out right wing to Pickett. Shot fake Pickett, drives it in, and he traveled. Had a jump step near the right elbow, and he traveled. I don't think that's traveling. No? He, he picked the ball up and his feet were in the air. You have, you have the ability to come down on both feet. I, you, you can hit one foot down. As long as you're in the air. I mean, he didn't pick it up when he was not in the air, then then hop. I'd, I'd have to see it again. To me, it looked funny, but I don't think it's probably. Okay. I obviously respect your opinion highly. You're probably <laughs> and, and you're probably right if history well, tells us anything. I bet you I'm right 50% of the time on that call. 
It's Adele Lowe, they go to Hampshire, who puts it up with a right hand baby hook and gets two. They find Hampshire again, coach, very close to the, the rim. Well, their penetration is great in those opportunities. 21-20 Pacific, 4.42 and counting to go in the first half. Our left to our right go the Highlanders, and in the front court they get it up top to McCray, the seven foot one big man, dribbles one time, went to hand it off, they denied it, so he gives it to Elkaz in the high front court, and now they pass to Pullen on the right wing for three, and he sinks it. Zylon Pullen coming into this game two of five from beyond the arc on the season. And a timeout called by UC Riverside. This is uh, going to happen with 4.25 to go in the half, so it'll stretch and become the full media timeout. That means that Coach and I will take it as well. This timeout comes with 4.25 left to go in the first half. Our score from stock to the UC Riverside Highlanders 23, the Pacific Tigers 21. And back after this on the Pacific Digital Network. When you walk throughout campus, like it's almost one of those campuses where everybody kind of smiles at each other. It's just welcoming, everybody's so welcoming. I feel like I'm coming home. One of the big strengths of Pacific is the small class sizes. I feel like I know all of my professors and that they know me. I hear stories all the time from people at the big brand name schools and how they wish that there was more personal interaction. I really like the environment that I felt at Pacific from like the first day at the Stockton campus. I just really felt like the professors actually knew who I was. It's family to me and I can hardly wait to get up in the morning and get in my car and come over here and then see my friends, my colleagues, the students. They become family to me. The students know that we care, that they matter in the classroom and we know each of them by name. We realize that our first responsibility is to our students and we have always taken that responsibility very seriously. So our first responsibility is teaching, our second responsibility is scholarship, it's not the other way around here. Four twenty-five to go in the first half. You see Riverside twenty-three, Pacific twenty-one. ZB and Coach T. Uh, David Hall coached uh, not this media timeout, but the last one came over to us and explained a little bit about how to enforce that flop violation. And essentially, what he said, and I'll let you explain it, is that it's it's a uh, it's a delay of game warning, really. Yes, and then there's also sometimes after made basket. Yep. The defense will hit the ball, and they'll warn them on the delay there. So the second one is a technical foul, free throw. So uh, that's what David Hall told us. We'll see. We'll see if that rule continues to be enforced that way. I, again, I, from my eyes, I've seen it three times called and three times enforced differently. Is on the left wing. Danis Jenkins gives a bounce pass left of the lane to Hampshire. Hampshire is back to the hoop, gives it out to Moore. Moore looking to his right, starts to dribble to his left. Chest pass to the left wing to trip four to shoot. Jaleel has to launch a three and knocks yeah, it but down. You know what he did? He squared up, took his time, did a one-two, and the guy didn't crowd him enough. It was a wide open shot. So the Tigers leapfrog in front. A lot of lead changes all of a sudden. 24-23 Pacific, 344 and counting to go in this first half. Dribbling to his right is Angus McWilliam, hands it off to Wilborn on the right wing. Wilborn kicks it to the right corner to Pullen, pivoting off his left foot, starts to swing it around to Watson. Watson hands to Pullen on the right wing, seven to shoot. Pullen back to Watson, he's gonna take a three and it's off the mark short. Rebound taken by Vereen. He was kind of between the top of the circle and the right wing, Pullen, where he took that shot. Tigers on the far right sideline, Moore directing traffic, chest pass to his left to trip. Jaleel dribbles with his left hand, crouched in. Cuts it back to his left. Nice move off the glass with the left hand. No, but he gets fouled. That was a strong move by Jaleel Tripp. And uh, two shots coming for yeah, you want him, Jaleel. If you're, you're for your Riverside, you want him to make that shot because it was a one-handed shot, and you don't want to foul and put him at the free throw line. They got the foul on Angus McWilliam. I was looking to see who that foul was on. McWilliam, his first. Free throw is up and good for Jaleel, and the Tigers have a two-point lead. This matches Pacific's largest lead, so if a trip makes this, Tigers have a three-point lead for the first time this afternoon. The bench has done a great job for the Tigers tonight. Second one up and good, so trip makes them both, and indeed for the first time, Pacific leads by three. 
from our left to our right go the Highlanders and into the front court it's Pullen. Pullen guarded up top by Crockrell as we tick to three minutes to go and now under three in the first half. Up top it's McCray dribbling to his right. McCray is going to fake the handoff and give it back up top to Pullen. 12 to shoot, Pullen fake right, dribble left. Pullen angled, slings a pass out to Elkaz, a three from the right side yeah, is no good. That's a good looking stroke he has. Rebound taken by Hampshire to trip. Long pass ahead to Vereen, a right wing three, and rhythm is too strong. Hampshire can't quite get his mitts on the rebound, but it deflects out to Jaleel Tripp, and the Tigers have a second opportunity. Did you like that shot by Vereen? Well, I mean, he hasn't had a, maybe that's his only shot of the game. I think, you know, I've always said, make your first two shots great shots. And you'd want to be able to make some before you took that shot. That shot wasn't great either. So. Crockrell with a running shot right of the lane. It's no good in the rebound taken by Riverside. Streaking to the bucket, putting it off the window, but off the side of the window is George Wilborn. Didn't go anywhere, and then the ball was loose, and there's a loose ball foul called on UC Riverside. It's going to be called on Callum McRae. And for McRae, that is his first foul of the game. Trip inbounds to Vereen. Some light backcourt pressure applied by Riverside, but Trip from our right to our left will take it into the front court as the pressure subsides. Under two minutes now in the first half. Jaleel goes downhill, stops, pivots from about 10 feet, takes oh, a fadeaway jumper shot. and knocks it down. Jaleel Trip has nine points. And the Tigers continue to build on their largest lead of the afternoon. Pacific 28, Riverside 23. Lob it down low, baseline left to McCray. McCray passes out to Elkaz on the left wing. Elkaz uh, will get it down low to McCray. Turn around, shot with the left hand is good. Deep. He should do that more often. I mean, I, it's like he's a little nervous about trying to score in there. Talking about McCray, the yeah. uh, seven foot one sophomore from New Zealand. I mean, He's leading 14 points a game. He looked like he's, he's looking that much. Backdoor cut. Brock Finstoon received a nice bounce pass from Crockrell, but Finstoon went up and lost a handle on the ball. I think he was looking for a foul. Riverside has it, and in transition, they will slow things down. They did not have numbers. 28-25 Pacific on the right wing. Pickett feigns an entry, keeps it on the perimeter, gives it to his left to pull him. 14 seconds. Pullen's going to go in on Vereen, put it up, and good no call good. Right there. Foul is going to be a blocking foul on Vereen. I didn't know if they were going to call it, but I think that was a good foul. That was our buddy Sir Alan Connor, who, by the way, I think is uh, he's not missed arm day at the gym since we last saw him. Sir Alan Connor, the uh, the official. That shirt, the uh, the sleeves of that jersey are hanging on for dear life. <laughs> he's been. I, hey, you know, believe it or not, I kind of like the new referee uniforms this year with the black sleeves. Yeah, looks like a little more hey. stylish, especially for a guy like him. As you the know, it might make referees look a little better. Anything to make them look better, I'm all for. <laughs> I don't think Sir Alan Connor has a problem physically looking better. No. He's done tricep extensions no. pretty much all winter, or all summer, I guess. David Hall, Sir Alan Connor, Juan Corral, the officiating crew in this one. The second one is up and short, and a rebound taken by Jaleel Tripp. So pull in one of two from the line, and he pulls the Highlanders to within two. It's 28-26 Pacific. Chavichian holding. Chavichian lobs it near midcourt to trip. Jaleel dribbles to his right, gives back to Chavichian, who dribbles to his left. He's on the left wing, hands it off to Crockrell. Crockrell drives baseline left, lobs it up to Hampshire, who can't uh, quite do anything with it. He tried to bat it. He didn't have a chance to catch it. Shot. <laughs> but not a bad but, idea. It's got to just be a better pass. I don't think it was a pass. I think it was a shot. You think it was a shot? I think so, but maybe not. Could have been. But uh, Hampshire had a chance to kind of bat it up, and he could not. So there's uh, about six seconds difference, shot clock to game clock here. Seven on the shot clock, and uh, we wind down the first half. Is down baseline left. It is Pullen. Pullen slithers took through the Took his time. Defense. Took his time. I don't know how he gets a layup like that. And it uh, puts it up and in. One to shoot. Finstoon at midcourt. Heaves it with one hand, and it's off the top of the backboard. Not a great finish the last two minutes for the Tigers. Yeah, as uh, we are at intermission, it's a tie ball game, 28-28. It was Colin McRae, by the way, who had that layup. It was uh, it was a nice pass by Pullen. I didn't quite see Pullen hand it off to McRae. I was shielded. But uh, just for FYI, Colin McRae had that layup at the end that tied the game. So that's how the first half concludes. 
And we have a tie score at intermission from the Spano Center, the Pacific Tigers 28, the UC Riverside Highlanders 28. Coach T and I will take a break, come back with some numbers after this on the Pacific Digital Network. Hi, Tiger fans. This is Janet Lucas, Director of Athletics at the University of the Pacific. The vision of Pacific Athletics is to be a program that's values-based and focused on the growth and success of our student athletes in the classroom, in competition, and in the community. This life-changing experience is built on the pillars of family, balance, innovation. When you attend the Jose Hernandez Reach for the Stars Academy, you can count on a pretty special guest speaker during the four weeks of classes and activities and that's former astronaut Jose Hernandez. Perseverance is you never, ever, ever, ever give up on yourself. Never give up. As a boy watching astronauts reach the moon, Jose told his parents that's what he wanted to do. As an adult, he began the academy for kids with the same passion for learning. In my case, I just needed a uh, a medium from which to sort of grow and uh, and we're providing that medium for these kids because in at my age when I was a kid we lacked it and so you sort of had to do it on your own and had to be very self-initiated. The activities like putting a marble through a roller coaster of insulation and tape are meant to be fun. Some of you have disconnected roller coasters which is great but there's a lot of learning going on here as well. For this section, we're learning physics. It, for physics, it's stuff like acceleration, and you have to have the right momentum. Our curriculum is uh, a college curriculum, so they cover physics, logic, pre-engineering, algebraic structures, um, aeronautics. So they cover a lot of topics that they don't typically get in high school and wouldn't get until they come to college. I chose to do this because it's better than staying at home being on video games, and I'm much rather get an education. The academy takes place at University of the Pacific, and if it just happens, some of these kids are back here a few years down the road continuing their math or science interests, well, that's by design. And we expose the kids to a university environment so that, you know, the university it isn't something strange uh, to them. Uh, that they're going to be afraid of. They know exactly what a campus is like. My parents didn't force me to come here. They let me choose. And I chose to come here because I wanted a better opportunity at learning and not forgetting and doing nothing during the summer. It's fun. My name is Brinley Barthels. I came to Pacific because I was actually looking at water polo programs and it was one of the better programs in the state. And they also had a great, si a great science program. So their biology and chemistry departments especially were very rigorous and something that I knew would prepare me well for my future. Um, when I visited the school, I saw a lot of chemistry labs and the opportunity for people to do research in the chemistry department. And that was something I was really excited about. My research when I started, we began with peptide synthesis. So basically taking these small building blocks called amino acids, putting them all together and forming long chains. So Alzheimer's in particular is manifested because peptides are created at different lengths. So we are able to take those peptides, recreate them in the lab and analyze their function and factors that make them non-functional. So my grandma was diagnosed with Alzheimer's a couple years ago, so it's extremely personal to me that you know I'm able to take this research that I'm doing and apply it back to my own life. It's humbling and also exciting that I am able to do these small experiments and look at these small peptides and know that somewhere somehow someone is going to take my research or the research that my lab is doing and use it on something bigger like these diseases. Perspective freshmen come in and they're asking well why should we choose Pacific you know what's the academics like the first thing I say every time is that the research aspect in the chemistry department especially is very unique. I know a lot of people that go to different schools in California or even in the United States that have never set foot in a research laboratory. The opportunities presented here are extremely important and extremely unique to Pacific. And everyone that asks me, I say the best part about this school is the research aspect of it.
communication skills are key not only because I'm a communication major, but even our students who are not communication majors, they learn a lot. If you had an interest in politics or maybe uh, being some type of sports manager or something along those lines, communication can lead you to do those types of things. The professors here in the communication department really inspired me. I love this communication major. I was so glad that I did. I'm on the speech and debate team and I'm a communication major. Being on the speech and debate team also gave me like a lot of opportunities outside of, uh, you know, outside of just scholarship opportunities but like traveling and networking. We did really well this semester. We won almost every single tournament we went to. A lot of what I do here at Pacific is help with the radio department. I help broadcast some of the games as well as host my own show. I just get to be a part of something that I've never thought I would do. The class I'm taking right now, writing for media, we've done some script writing. It's been a pretty interesting process, it's actually one of my favorites. I just did a social media project um, for my classes, so I learned how to use each of the platforms and what type of language I'm supposed to use on all of them. I joined the speech and debate team and found out this whole world of communication that was everything I'd enjoyed. Research, looking up concepts, understanding people, and I was like, this is perfect. Everything we do is communication, from nonverbal communication to intended messages, do the things we wear. Communication is the essence of everything. When you walk throughout campus, like it's almost one of those campuses where everybody kind of smiles at each other. It's just welcoming. Everybody's so welcoming. I feel like I'm coming home. One of the big strengths of Pacific is the small class sizes. I feel like I know all of my professors and that they know me. I hear stories all the time from people at the big brand name schools and how they wish that there was more personal interaction. I really like the environment that I felt at Pacific from like the first day at the Stockton campus. I just really felt like the professors actually knew who I was. It's family to me and I can hardly wait to get up in the morning and get in my car and come over here and then see my friends, my colleagues as students. They become family to me. The students know that we care, that they matter in the classroom and we know each of them by name. We realize that our first responsibility is to our students and we have always taken that responsibility very seriously. So our first responsibility is teaching, our second responsibility is scholarship, not the other way around. I chose UOP because of the small classroom sizes. I love the idea of the professors, you know, the old slogan, they know who you are, they know your name, and it's more of a friendly, more relaxed atmosphere. I've loved all the different people that I've been able to meet, um, people from different backgrounds, from different areas, different countries, definitely come from all over, and that's even gonna influence like where you go to eat on a Friday night or whatever. So like all the different food choices, and then Stockton provides a lot of opportunities for you to go and try new things. I think Stockton has a very small community feel and I think that uh, translates over to UOP how we have a small family environment here. Also at Weber Point, that's where they hold lots of festivals out there. Um, just um, this year they had the fireworks over there for 4th of July and it was really nice to go over there and see the city come together and hang out. I, don't, I can't imagine being anywhere else. I think Stockton has a really bright future um, because of its people, because of the people that care. Something I learned about Stockton is that there are a lot of hidden gems around the city and you really have to get out there and just put yourself out there and just explore a little with your friends. Especially going to UOP every single year, you kind of get more and more of a sense of the city that you live in. It's kind of excessively friendly w with the people that I've actually stopped to like talk to and have interactions with. Um, it's really friendly um, and there are a lot of people just kind of hidden amongst the ranks that really want to make the city a better place, um, which I think is actually pretty unique. I 
I think it's a very personal decision where you decide to go to college and spend those four years of your life. At Pacific, you know you'll get a great education, but you'll also have a really good time. You'll be a part of a really strong and thriving community. I've always wanted to come here since I was little. I remember I would pass by here when I was younger. We would come and take pictures or come for tours when I was like in middle school. And I was like, wow, this is amazing. I, I was just in shock by the buildings themselves and the history of UOP and, and the people within it. It was just a beautiful place that I dreamt of. I thought maybe one day if I work really, really hard and I'm good, I'm truly good at what I do, I might be able to get in and I'm here and I love it. Hi, my name is Lila Valencia and I'm a fine arts major here at UOP and this is my art studio. The University of the Pacific is a comprehensive university that integrates liberal arts and professional education, serving approximately 6,000 students on campuses in Stockton, Sacramento, and San Francisco. Our goal is to provide a superior student-centered learning experience in order to prepare our students to become leaders in their communities. Because we believe that diversity, equity, and inclusion are essential to the fulfillment of our institutional mission, we seek to recruit and retain diverse faculty who share our commitment to excellence in teaching, scholarship, and service. Founded in 1851, the University of the Pacific is California's first chartered institution of higher education. The Sacramento campus houses the McGeorge School of Law and also offers programs in public administration, public policy, education, and physician assistant studies. San Francisco, which houses the Arthur A. Degoni Dental School and graduate programs in audiology, data science, and food studies. Stockton is home to our undergraduate liberal arts college, the graduate program, and schools of education, engineering, business, international studies, music, pharmacy, and health sciences. Stockton was recently recognized as an all-American city and is one of the most integrated and diverse cities in the U.S. All undergraduates must complete one diversity course as a key curricular component of Pacific's commitment to diversity and inclusive excellence. Faculty engage in teaching, research, service, providing students with experiential learning opportunities such as undergraduate research. The University of the Pacific offers over 80 majors and programs of study. The Pacific community is a place where all are welcome, and diversity is celebrated and recognized. Here at the University of the Pacific, all members of our community, students, staff, and faculty, are valued and respected. Therefore, I'd like to welcome you to join us in our ongoing collaborative efforts to sustain and advance the inclusive excellence of our campus. Thank you. By calling 209-946-2591 or check the website at www.joinpaf.org. These teams
28 as we are about to start the second half. Zach Bay Rudy, Bob Thomason, glad to have you along. 20 minutes back on the clock. And a 28-28 tie. And it's Jaleel Tripp, Brock Finstoon, Austin Vereen, Amari McRae, and Justin Moore. The same starting five as the Tigers have the ball to start the half and moving from our left to our right as McRae has it up top. Dribbles to his left and hands it off to Moore who gets to the left elbow, kicks it out to Finstoon, drives in from the top of the circle, up the right hand, leaves the shot short. And a rebound taken by UC Riverside. The Highlanders moving from our right to our left as Wilborn on the right wing, or left wing, will give it up top to Cabela, who dribbles to the left wing, guarded by Finstoon, slips a bounce pass down low to McCray. Callum McCray try to get it in the lane, and Justin Moore picks it off, steals it, and passes it off to Amari McCray to save the possession. Now Vereen driving baseline left, goes underneath the bucket, tries to scoop it up reverse style, and he missed it. Yeah, tough shot, tough shot. Cabellas is on the left wing, drives to the baseline left, tries to feed it out to McCray, stolen by Jaleel Tripp. It's a two-on-one. Tripp's going to take it himself and go up with the right hand and get fouled, and he's going to get to the line. I don't know if there's anything different Tripp could have done there. It was kind of an awkward-looking uh, Well, shot. sometimes you want to hesitate, cross over, and then take an extra dribble and go to the other side of the bat and stop and just use the 6-5 strength over the top because right there, the, the defense played good defense, but he reached in at the last moment. If he just would have made... Him make that shot? He might have made it, but it still would have been kind of a tough shot. Free throws up and no good for a trip around the rim and out, so we're still trying to break the seal on the, the second half. The first two shots of Pacific have been so-so. You know, the, the first time of the game, that one was a good shot, but the first other two were just, you want to start on the second half taking good shots. Start making those baskets, kind of release those things and get your energy on defense a lot better. Second one is good for Jaleel, so the Tigers have the first point of the half, Pacific leading 29-28. Up top, Wilborn. Wilborn dribbling to his right, looks to his left, passes to Cabela's. Cabela's guarded by Justin Moore, 15 on the shot clock. Chest pass to the left wing to Elkaz and trying to get it down low to That's McRae. A third. And uh, Cullen McRae, or Callum McRae, was fouled by. Who is it on? McRae. It was on McRae. It was on Amari, yeah. That is his third. Those kind of fouls are going to happen during the night. That's not the one that's taking them out of the game. It's the two from 94 feet. And you wouldn't want to go in. To me, they should have gone inside the first couple plays to him to get him going before he does get in foul from him. Baseline left. It is inbounded to Callum McRae, who goes to the left wing and then gives it up top to Pickett. Dominic Pickett drives. Pickett trying to get around the defense. Nice uh, defense by the Tigers to recover. And now Pickett's trapped on the baseline. Give it to Cabellas, who is trailing. And Kai puts up a runner and gets it. Nice through. shot. Good backdoor pass. Looked like it was going nowhere for Pickett, but Cabellus came as, a, as an outlet and was able to receive the pass and knock it down to give the Highlanders the lead here in the second half. 30 to 29, UC Riverside as Moore gives a bounce pass to Vereen, curling to his right, Very and nice Austin shot. puts it up and in. Very nice shot. Good curl off the baseline screen. 18 minutes and counting to go in the second half. It's 31-30 Pacific. Dribbling to his left is Wilborn. Wilborn probes into the lane, puts up a tough shot that is no good, and the loose ball goes out of bounds. He stayed they after it, though, and he got the ball. Oh, yeah. they changed it? That last touch by Pacific, I think it went off the foot of Vereen. So baseline left, Cabellus will look to inbound. And Cabellus lobs it to McCray, who gives it back to Cabellus. Kai dribbles to his right. He's on the left wing. Kai up top to Pickett, right wing to Elkaz. Elkaz dribbles to his left, chest pass to Pickett. Pickett dribbles to his right. Pickett slings it back to the left wing to Cabellus. Fake left, dribble right. Kai up top with it, still with a dribble, and trying to split defenders. And a reach and foul is going to be called on Jaleel Tripp with three seconds on the shot clock. Oh, my goodness. And that is, uh, that is not a good foul there by Jaleel Tripp. Cabellus was moving laterally to his right, and so that uh, essentially is a bailout there. 20 seconds back on the shot clock. That is the second team foul on Pacific. Cabellus will inbound on a bounce to Wilborn. Wilborn on the right wing up top to pick it. Now back to Cabellus. Shot fake. Cabellus dribbles to his left. Kai gives it out to McCray. McCray dribbling to his right. Looking for a dribble handoff. Instead, he kicks a pass on the right wing to Wilborn. Fake right, dribble left, take a three, and it's off the mark. And the rebound taken by Jaleel Tripp. Our left to our right, Tripp takes into the front court. Jaleel drives to his left, pulls it back, now drives to his right. Tripp shot fake right of the lane, give it out to Moore. 
Justin on the right wing, dribbling with his left hand, gives a bounce pass back to his right to trip. Jaleel backing his way in. Jaleel gives a pass down low to Hampshire, who puts it up and is fouled from behind. Nice pass. By Callum nice McCray. Pass. The, the great interior passing continues to get the ball to James Hampshire. Well, when you penetrate in there, people have to help, and there's going to be openings. And there's two parts of it. One, find the guy. But number two, the center is doing a good job creating space and, and allowing the guy to make, make that pass. Hampshire's free throw is up and good. So that ties it at 30. I'm sorry, gives Pacific a 32-30 lead. Second one is up, and was it an air ball? But I yeah, think but uh, a lane violation. Was there a lane violation there? Yeah. Yeah. Lane McCray now, stepped in too early. And now Juan Corral's going over to David Hall. I'm not sure what those two were talking about. Want to get on the same page about something, but uh, coach, you're saying it was uh, Callum McRae that got yeah, in there. Yeah, I didn't see who early. it was. He, you know, <laughs> they're gonna try to figure it out. Well, David Hall calling the coaches over. Let's see, Let's see if we can eavesdrop. James has a little. So what, what David Hall is saying is that there's a, because James Hampshire shot an air ball, that's a violation too, so it's a double violation. It might go the, the jump ball. Might go the jump ball. And it goes the jump ball, the arrow, and it's Riverside's ball. Okay. But the only good thing about it, Pacific will get the next. Yep, goes to the arrow, that's what he's saying. So yeah, so the Tigers will have the possession arrow back. Yeah. Well, Hampshire, ha he, he takes a shot and he leans it back farther and the guy anticipating. That's why you need to watch film on those because there's some guys that have hitches and you've got to make sure you have the discipline not to go in there. Pickett drives it near the free throw line, dumps it down low to McCray and he is stuffed by James Hampshire. Loose ball gathered in by Jaleel Tripp, our left to our right. Tripp is on the left wing. Jaleel dribbles to his right, chest pass to Vereen. Vereen, chest pass to the right corner to Finstoon. Brock pivots off his left foot, drives baseline, spin move, goes airborne, gives to Vereen, left corner for three, it's no good. Good pass, good shot. Tigers got a good look there and could not convert. Riverside with the miss, Cabellus navigating the defense, goes to the baseline, kicks it out right wing to Pickett, he's gonna launch a three and it's good. He's tough. I don't know why they're leaving him. You know, they say they don't want to have shoot threes, but when people penetrate, just stay out there with them. Pickett coming into this game four of eight from beyond the arc on the season, and Pickett in this game, uh, he's one of one. That was his first attempt, and he gives the Highlanders a 33-32 lead as Moore gives it out to Finstoon. Finstoon dribbles to his right, stops in the key. Finstoon pivoting off his right foot, leaves it for Hampshire. Hampshire cuts into the lane awkwardly, gives to Finstoon. Finstoon drives near the free throw line, spinning it back out. He lost the dribble, scoops it up with the right hand and gets two. You know, the big fella should have just bellied up on him and crowded him, but he didn't think he was going to shoot that. He kind of backed off of him, but it was a great finish. That was one of the uglier shots you'll see by Brock Finstoon, but he made something out of nothing. And a big bucket for the Tigers who lead by one in this back and forth game as Cabela scribbles to his left. Slings it off to the right, it's knocked away and out of bounds last touched by UC Riverside. They were trying to hit uh, Wilborn on the far side. You gotta throw it to where people are, not where you think people are. Sage advice from Coach T. And it'll take us to a timeout on the floor here from the Spano Center in this timeout with 15.25 to go in the second half. The Pacific Tigers 34, the UC Riverside Highlanders 33. And we're back after this on the Pacific Digital Network. College students, college athletes, all conference, all academics, all Americans, champions. Together we are able to make an impact for over 300 student athletes who are able to rise to these levels through the power of our community's loyal support every year. Together, we are able to provide the resources to make a difference and build a future for Tigers who inspire us each and every day. Join the PAF today and become part of our Tiger family. For more information on the PAF and how you can help support Pacific student-athletes, call 
2591 or check the website at www.joinpaf.org and join the uproar. This is Damon Stoudemire, head coach of your Pacific Tigers. It's never too late to join the uproar. Season and partial ticket plans are available by calling my friends in the ticket office at 209-946-2474 or by going online to pacifictigers.com. We would love to count on your support this season. Buy your tickets today at pacifictigers.com or by calling the ticket office 209-946-2474. Twenty-five to go in the second half. Zach Beirut, Coach T, glad to be with you. It is 34-33 Pacific. And Danis Jenkins is back on the floor for the Tigers. And Jenkins will take a dribble handoff and dribble to his left. Hand it off to Justin Moore, dribbling to his right. Takes a pull up from the right elbow. That's no good. Can't get a better shot short. now. Pretty good shot. Great screen. Now Wilborn in transition in the thicket of the Tiger defense. Gives it out to Pickett up top. Pickett holding by his left knee, now dribbles to his left. Pickett on the left wing, chest pass back up top to his right to McDonald, further right of the far right sideline, it goes to Wilborn. Wilborn driving it in, awkwardly leaning to the bucket, threw up a brick, and it went nowhere except off the bottom of the backboard. Looks like he's looking for a foul and didn't get it. Yeah, he was trying to draw contact as Moore, cutting across the key, dumps it down low to Vereen on a backdoor cut, and Vereen will run in to a Riverside player, that is Angus McWilliam, and it's going to be blocking foul on McWilliam. You're kind of waiting for Moore to do a little more, more than he's been doing today. He's Nicely such a done. good player, and he's got great stats this year. But that was a great shot he took that last time. Good screen, good dribble rub action, and there's nothing you can do as a coach there. You got the guy you wanted to shoot the ball, and he shot it, and he missed it. 21 seconds remain on the shot clock, 14.40 to go in the second half. It's 34-33 Pacific. Moore has it. And holding down by his ankles, he uses a screen, dribbles to his right, gets through the defense, off the window with the right hand. No, couldn't quite get the that right angle shot, on that though. bank shot. Riverside with it, trailing by one. Pullen is near the left wing. Now he cuts through the defense, scoops up with the right hand. No, but he does get fouled. And Zion Pullen will get to the line. Good crossover. And it's going to be James Hampshire with the foul. So Pullen's going to the line. And this season, Pullen is two of two from the stripe. In this game, Pullen is one of four from the line. He has, in fact, shot all four UC Riverside free throws in this game. And again, he's one of four. The free throw is up and good. Crockrell and Bailey check in for the Tigers. By the way, I don't mean to take you down memory lane in a bad way. Come really. on now. Pacific all-time versus UC Riverside is 13-3. and three. The last Tiger loss at home to Riverside came on January 7, 2012. That was a 64-57 loss, and that was the last time Pacific lost, period, to Riverside. So the Tigers have won yeah. five straight meetings. The worst loss to Riverside was about five, six years before that, when the year that we ended up being really good and we lost in the NCAAs. 2009. But it was an opening league game. We lost to them, and they weren't very good. Now, we were worse than they were that day, that day but but uh, we ended up winning the league after losing our first game in Riverside. Well, after the second free throw was made by Pullen, it was uh, an inbound pass, and there was some pressure from UC Riverside, and the Tigers... That's twice they've, they've turned the ball over. And the Tigers lost the ball, and then uh, James Hampshire committing a foul in the backcourt, so it goes back to UC Riverside. Wonder if that might cause Riverside to pressure a little bit more. As on the right side, it is McDonald. Well, they've McDonald been doing it after free Pullen. throws, they, you know, a couple times after free throws. They've only made a couple free throws tonight, so they can't do it on missed free throws. Cabellus up top. Kai guarded by his former teammate, Jeremiah Bailey, goes off the dribble, puts it off the window, oh, and a, in. What a great shot. Kai Got to stay down on him and take his left hand away. I mean, Bailey just kind of lifted up like he's going to challenge the shot. Cabellus now with nine points, and uh, he leads the Highlanders in the the points category is it Jaleel Tripp up top. Riverside leading by three now, 37-34. Tripp, head fake, drives it in, gets to the baseline, scoops it up with the right hand. No, James Hampshire gets the ball and then gets mauled. 
Wasn't quite a loose ball foul. I Hampshire thought Hampshire had fouled first, and then he got definitely fouled. But they pass on those things a lot when two guys are going for a rebound. So Angus play. McWilliam is the guilty party for UC Riverside. The Highlanders committed four fouls, as have the Tigers. Tigers having a good game, especially coming into this game. He's three for 15. He hasn't done much in all four games. Crockrell slaps the basketball baseline left hill inbound. 20 on the shot clock. Stravichian is back on the floor. Back to Crockrell who puts the ball on the hardwood. Crockrell backpedaling with the dribble. Now at an angle, directing traffic. Coming toward the near sideline. Gives a bounce pass to Jenkins on the right wing. Jenkins fake left, dribble right, gets to the baseline. Give it out to Bailey. Bailey with four to shoot. Staggers in, takes a fade away from 16. It's no good. And a rebound taken by Pullen. What a very good possession that time. Pullen driving into the front court, almost lost a handle on it, gets it back, and now up top to Cabellas, who has nine points. Kai drives into baseline right, stops, trying to pivot around Bailey, gives it out to McDonald. McDonald chest pass in the high front court to Pullen. Pullen dribbles to his left, Pullen drives it in, Pullen scoops it off the glass and in. Zion Pullen, the freshman from Pleasant Hill, makes it a five point lead, and now a distance pass to Janus Jenkins, was almost out of bounds, Jenkins saved it, fling it over his head, but it's a turnover as Riverside gets oh, it back and McDonald launches right a there. three, and it's no good from the left wing. That would have been a big, huge shot right there. Tigers in need of a good possession here. Yeah. It's been a bit sketchy the last couple of times down the floor as Jeremiah Bailey well, they have dribbles. Fun, you know, they, have, they don't have one starter out there to calm them down. Crockrell on the left wing. Crockrell starts to angle in and gets through the defense. A nice move, and he lays Ooh. it up and in. Crockrell, oh, that's a shot. Tough shot. shot. I wouldn't worry, if I was Riverside, I wouldn't worry about tough shots. Same with Tigers. Tough shots never beat you. It's just the easy shots. 39-36, Riverside by three is up top. It's McWilliam dribbling to his right. Hands it off to McDonald. McDonald, a nice bounce pass. Good to block. He's blocked Good by block. James Hampshire. James Hampshire continues to be a solid presence on the floor for the Tigers. And it uh, is going to take us to a timeout on the floor. Riverside will retain possession with 11 seconds on the shot clock. When we come back after this timeout on the floor, and from the Spano Center, it comes with 11.51 to go in the second half. UC Riverside Highlanders 39, Pacific Tigers 36 on the Pacific Digital Network. Coach of your Pacific Tigers. Become part of our team today and support your women's basketball program by joining an elite group of friends, family, and supporters who are part of our inner circle, known as the Center Court Club. This is your opportunity to join our team and get insider access that will support the program to compete against and beat the best in the country. Join Center Court Club today and become part of the Tiger family by calling 209-946-2591 or check the website at www.joinpaf.org. The University of the Pacific women's basketball season is underway, and we have a limited amount of courtside seats available. Give us a call at 209-946-2474 or go online to pacifictigers.com and learn how you can watch the Pacific women's basketball team play this season from the best seats in the house at the Spano Center. Great to have you with us, Zach Bay Rudy, Coach T, Bob Thomason, the great Bob Thomason, 11.51 to go <laughs> in the second half. 39-36 Riverside, baseline right, it is Pullen going to inbound, and uh, Amari, Amari McCray doing oh. jumping jacks in his face, and the uh, ball gets into the backcourt, and it was touched by Bailey, so no backcourt violation, and Riverside able to get it back. Up top, it's Elkaz to the left wing to Cabellas, dribbles to his left, and puts a shot up that is uh, going to be an air ball. It's a shot clock great violation. Great defense by Tiger. Well, that was a great job of Amari McCray, who, by the way, is back on the floor with his three fouls. He was doing jumping jacks on the baseline, pressuring the ball on well, the inbound. Well, Tripp's back in the game, too, and he's had a great game, and he'll give him a lot of stability. That was a point of emphasis in shoot-around today, was pressuring the ball on the inbound and really making it difficult for the inbounders on baseline out of bounds plays. Well, they've gone to put a big guy on the ball. You know, teams will get used to it. 
Bounce pass up top to Jeremiah Bailey. Bailey dribbling to his right, hands to Crockrell. Crockrell continues to his right. Crockrell passes down low to McRae, who gives it back out to Bailey. Four to shoot, and now three. McRae has to go to work. Amari gets the ball up with the left hand, and it rattles out. And a rebound shot. taken by Co uh, Callum McRae. Good look there for Amari. That's yeah. his bread and butter going to his left hand as Cabellas dribbles to his left. Kai spins it back and gives it out to Pullen. Pullen chest pass up top to Elkaz. And now on the right wing to McDonald. McDonald dumps it to McRae. McRae drives, tries to feed it back out, stolen by Crockrell. It's a three on two. Pierre gives it to Tripp coming right down Broadway. Oh, and Jalea lays it up great and pass. in. Great pass. Great finish. 39-38, UC Riverside by one. 10.35 and counting to go in the second half. From our right to our left, Zion Pullen. Again, the freshman from Pleasant Hill gives to Cabela's driving in from the left wing. Kai has the ball stripped by Bailey, and it's stolen by Tripp. Tripp head up into the front court. Tripp trying to go in on Cabela's. He puts it up. The shot won't count. No continuation. The foul was well before the shot, and the foul is going to be on Kai Cabela's, who is trying to stay with his former teammate, Jaleel Tripp. So that is team foul number five for UC Riverside. So 26 on the shot clock, baseline left, Crockrell will inbound, and Pierre inbounds to Moore underneath the basket. Great Moore kisses inside. it off the glass and in. Great pass inside. Now they got both point guards out there in the court right now for the Tigers and the shooter. So I like their, their lineup right now. Tigers the lead back, 40 to 39 Pacific. As driving it in right of the lane is Poland, and he puts it up and wow, in. Zion Poland, nice right move. There. I've been impre impressed with the freshman Poland in this game. Poland has uh, 10 points now. Crockrell across midcourt, hands it to Moore along the near side. Bounce pass up top to Chevichian. Chevichian to his left to Crockrell. Crockrell. Gives a bounce pass to his left on the left wing to Moore. Back it goes to Crockrell on the right wing. Pierre, clumsy dribble, crosses over, drives it in. Crockrell through the defense, trying to feed Jaleel Tripp. It's knocked away, out of bounds. Last touch by Jaleel. Too Tough fancy interior passing. Yeah. He's a little, I'm not saying he's careless. He's a little fancy, th thinks everything's going to work out. 9.26 and counting to go in the second half. It's 41-40, Riverside driving in his pull, and he puts it up no good, gets his own miss, but to trip, able to pry the ball loose, and now Chevichian has it going into the front court. A pull up three left wing, and that's off the mark. Rebound oh, taken, though, by Jaleel Tripp. By Tripp. Callum McRae couldn't quite get the rebound. He had both hands on it, but couldn't haul it in. What a good shot off the break right there. Up top, it's Moore. Moore looking right, looking left, now uses a screen, dribbles left, puts a floater up from 14 and knocks it down. Maybe that'll get him going. He, oh. He's got a lot of body balance. He can make a lot of shots. And got good size for guard. Six points for Justin. And the Tigers vault back in front, 42-41. Back and forth, we swing like a pendulum here at the Spano Center, driving in his picket. Pickett feeding it behind to Wilborn. Wilborn from about 10 feet tries to drive it that in on Moore. Puts there. it up, it's no good. That was a foul. And uh, you thought it was defense or offense? Defensive foul. Well, then Moore kind of blew his body back. They let him get away with it if indeed it was as Moore drives into the lane, puts it Very up. Very nice pass. Uh, puts it Very over nice to McRae, and McRae puts it off the glass and in. Moore did pass did. across the lane. Yeah, Moore did a great job. Scored a bucket, made an assist. That was easy, does it right there. Moore was on the lower right block, fed it across to the left block to McRae, who had an uncontested layup. And a timeout called by UC Riverside. That uh, should become the full media timeout, and it will. It comes with 8.17 to go in the second half. The Pacific Tigers 44, the UC Riverside Highlanders 41. And Coach T and I are back after this on the Pacific Digital Network. Unmatched passion. Incredible power. This trophy is not given. It must be earned. The National Collegiate Men's Water Polo Championship. December 7th and 8th at Chris Kelts and Pool Complex in Stockton, California. Right on the front doorstep, punches it in. Season opening and lets it fly. Visit NCAA.com slash tickets and get your tickets today. Community service is an integral part of Pacific Athletics with many of our student athletes, coaches, and staff committed to giving back to both the campus and surrounding community. On any day of the week, 
The Tigers are making a difference in the lives of others and broadening Pacific's role as a community partner in Stockton and the region. Last year, the Pacific Tigers engaged in 2,000 hours of community service. If you'd like to make Pacific Athletics part of your community event, go to PacificTigers.com, click on the Community tab, and submit your request. Let us be a part of your uproar. Eight seventeen to go in the second half in regulation Pacific 44, UC Riverside 41. It's been a back and forth affair here at the Spano Center. Our right to our left, Zion Pullen into the front court up the far right sideline. Gives it up top to Elkaz. Back to Pullen on the right wing and a whistle away from the ball and a foul is going to be called on Amari, Amari McRae. And that is his fourth. And James Hampshire comes back in, and Amari has just been thwarted by foul trouble in this game. He's got to get his hands off of him when he's trying to fight around him. Baseline right, 21 seconds on the shot clock. Inbound to Callum McRae. And back to the right corner, it goes to Pullen. Pullen having a big second half as Elkaz now with it up top. Gives to Pickett on the left wing. 12 on the shot clock. Pickett dribbles to his right. Gives a bounce pass to McRae. McRae in the short left corner driving in on Hampshire and goes up with a wow, reverse Wow, you can't let him go glass. baseline like that. Just cut off the baseline. Make him shoot a 10-footer over you. 44-43, Pacific by one. Chavichian pressured, and he gets it up top to Moore, who gives it to his left to trip going downhill. Lobs it up oh, for Hampshire, who catches and great with job. two hands flushes it through the cylinder. Great job. Great to... Great offense there for the Tigers while being pressured. That's something that's not come easy in this game. Left corner, it is Pickett. Pickett dribbles one time, gives to Pullen. Pullen dribbles to his right. Pullen gives on the right wing to McDonald. McDonald's oh, got a floater up. Goes nowhere, but uh, McCray gets the loose ball. Tried to throw it off of Hampshire. Then, did not go out of bounds, foul. and then Hampshire gives a loose ball foul. How did he not get that ball? So that is the third personal on Hampshire, and it's going to take us to another timeout on the floor. And Stoudemire is uh, upset at Hampshire, saying, you got to grab the ball, man. I mean, you grab the ball, A, you get the ball, and B, you don't get the foul. But so it goes. This timeout comes with 7.10 to go in regulation. The Pacific Tigers 46, the UC Riverside Highlanders 43. Coach T and I back after this on the Pacific Digital Network. Brand new Tiger Cubs, the official kids club of Pacific Athletics. Kids receive free admission to select games, a Pacific Tigers fan package, and access to special events with many of our teams, all for the low price of just $20 per child for a one-year membership. Visit www.pacifictigers.com slash tigercubs today to sign up. Be a part of the uproar this season. Limited ticket packages for Pacific men's basketball are available now and are a great way to catch all the action in 2019-20. Can't make all the games? Call us at 209-946-2474 or go online to PacificTigers.com and learn about partial ticket plan options. It's the best way to catch all the best games at the lowest price. Zach Bay Rudy, Bob Thomason, glad to have you along as with 7.10 to go in regulation, Pacific 46, UC, UC Riverside 43. Pacific men's basketball team set to take on Boise State here at the Spano Center this coming Saturday, November 23rd at 4 p.m. The first 250 fans received a Pacific Tigers water bottle courtesy of 209 Furniture. Tickets are still available. For more information, call the box office at 209 946-2474 or visit PacificTigers.com. 
Baseline left, Zion pulling inbounds to Callum McRae, or Callum McRae, beg your pardon, McRae dribbling back toward the wing, and now they get it near midcourt in the hands of Pullen. 12 on the shot clock. Pullen will get screened to his right, dribble to his right. Pullen looking back to his left to Elkaz, down low to McRae, and he beats everybody, and he puts it up and misses the layup. McRae gets it, to, or tries to get it back, and Jaleel Critter steals it. 7-1 missing that layup. And McCray should have had his own miss, and Jaleel Tripp stole it right out of his hands. McCray was probably shocked that he was all by himself, and he missed the wide open layup. On the left wing, Chavichian dribbles to his right, up top to Moore. Moore is going to drive in right of the lane, encounters two defenders, slings it out to Vereen, left wing for three. Got oh, it. Big shot. When a point guard can pull the ball from one block to the opposite wing, you know. Yeah, it's a big time player, got great vision. Big, big bucket for Austin Vereen, and it's the biggest Tiger lead of the afternoon, 49-43 Pacific. Up top, it's Pullen. Pullen dribbles to his right. Now back to his left, drives left of the lane, puts it off the window, no, but he does get fouled by Moore, I believe, and yeah, it's Justin Moore who gave him a little body bump. With 6.03 to go, it'll get to Pullen back to the line where he is three of six. Pullen, the true freshman, has 10 points on three of four from the floor. First one is up and no good. That was a bad miss by Pullen. Second one is up and good, so Poland one of two. It's 49-44 Pacific with 6.03 to go in the second half. Our left to our right, Jaleel Tripp across the center court stripe. Tripp moving to his right, gives to Vereen up top. Vereen, chest pass to his left to Chavichian. Chavichian gives to his right to Moore. Moore off the screen, dribbles to his right, takes a 16-foot pull up and knocks it down. 51-44 Pacific. 540 and counting to go in regulation. Pullen on the left wing, chest pass to Wilborn on the left wing. Now up top to Cabellus. Cabellus dribbles to his right, now to his left, trying to drive being denied. Gives it back up top to McDonald. McDonald passes to his right to Pullen. Pullen dribbles to his right. Short right corner, he stops the dribble, gives it in the lane to McWilliam, who puts it up with the left hand. No, ball is loose, and a loose ball foul called on UC Riverside. That's kind of a tough call, I thought. He just slapped the ball because he's behind him. I don't know, I just thought that was kind of a tough call. Foul is on Angus McWilliam. They are not in the bonus. It's gonna come down in the last five minutes, free throws, and take care of the ball and take good shots. Inbound to Moore who streaks fast into the front court from the far left side. Moore chest pass to Chavichian on the left wing, up top to Tripp. Tripp dribbles to his left, hands it off to Gary with 5.08 and counting to go in regulation. Hands off to Moore on the right wing. Moore trying to get through the defense, body's kind of flying everywhere, puts up a floater and it's short. Good shot though, he's on control. Rebound taken by Wilborn. There was some bodies kind of clanging around there and Moore put up a floater that was on balance and he left it just short. Cabela's baseline left is trapped down there, lost a the dribble, gives to Pullen on the left wing. Pullen guarded by Jaleel Tripp. Off the screen, dribbles to his right. Shot fake, gives it up to McDonald. McDonald dribbles to his left, drives it in, and gets through Vereen. Gives it out right corner for a three, and that is no good. That was Wilborn. Weak side rebound, though, taken by uh, McWilliam. So the Highlanders get it back, and now Cabela's driving in from the top of the circle. Misses the running oh, layup. Ball is loose, and it's on the floor. It's still loose. And what's going to be the call here? Juan Corral had to look at it. It's a jump ball, and the possession arrow is the Tigers. Everybody, I think, was trying to call a timeout, but nobody had possession. It kept yeah. on, uh, on switching hands. It's going to be 29 seconds on the shot clock, says uh, Juan Corral. And this will be a uh, this will be a media timeout. There's a jump ball, right? Yeah. I don't know how one second comes off the shot. I don't clock. either. You could ask your buddy David Hall. We'll, we'll tell you when we come back. I, I don't know. When we come back after this timeout on the floor, it comes with 4:25 to go in regulation. The Pacific Tigers 51, the UC Riverside Highlanders 44 on the Pacific Digital Network. All conference, all academics, all Americans, champions.
Together, we are able to make an impact for over 300 student athletes who are able to rise to these levels through the power of our community's loyal support every year. Together, we are able to provide the resources to make a difference and build a future for Tigers who inspire us each and every day. Join the PAF today and become part of our Tiger family. For more information on the PAF and how you can help support Pacific student athletes, call 209-946-2591 or check the website at www joinpaf.org and join the uproar. This is Damon Stoudemire, head coach of your Pacific Tigers. It's never too late to join the uproar. Season and partial ticket plans are available by calling my friends in the ticket office at 209-946-2474 or by going online to pacifictigers.com. We would love to count on your support this season. Buy your tickets today at PacificTigers.com or by calling the ticket office 209-946-2474. Four twenty-five to go in the second half in regulation. The Pacific Tigers trying to hang on, make it six straight wins over UC Riverside, 51-44 Pacific. It'll be Jaleel Tripp to inbound to Vereen, and there was some pressure on the inbound pass. Riverside no! uh, subsides the pressure, but uh, Tripp clumsily dribbling into the front court. He almost lost a handle on it, my goodness. It became one-on-one -on -one pressure with the George Wilborn guarding Jaleel Tripp, and uh, they almost caused the turnover. 10 seconds on the shot clock as Moore has it in the high front court. Moore kicks it to his left to Chevichian. They're right up on him. Back to Moore. Five to shoot and now four. Moore realizes three, two, one. He has to take a running shot. It is going to clang off the right side of the Not rim. Not a great possession right there. Come out of the timeout. 51-44 Pacific. 3.48 to go. And now Williams, or rather Pullen, I should say, for three. Going and it's good. The, the screen. And when you're up, you know, you don't, you don't want to go underneath screens and allow him to shoot a three-point shot. Zion Pullen, the true freshman now with 14 points. And he is booing the Highlanders. We're going to find out the last four minutes here, their execution, and see how they can handle it and calm down. At times this stage of the game has been a problem for the Tigers. Obviously going back to the Hawaii game especially. Driving is Moore, slings it out to the right wing to trip. Seven to shoot. Jaleel's going to drive to the baseline right, put up a fadeaway and knock it down. Shot. Big shot by Jaleel Tripp. Good trip. balance. 14 points now for Jaleel. He's leading the way for Pacific, their only double-figure scorer. 53-47 Pacific. Up top it is Wilborn. Pass to the right to McDonald. McDonald in the high front court. Cuts the dribble to his left. Chest pass to his left to Pickett. Now in the left corner to Wilborn. Driving in on the baseline. Wilborn stops the dribble. Pivots it out. Gives to McDonald. Back left corner. Seven to shoot. Six. McDonald is going to try and drive to the baseline. Puts up a tough fadeaway. It's around the rim and out. Good Great defense. defense. Chevichian, good deep, and the bench is letting him hear about it. 2.34 and counting to go in the second half. 53-47, Tigers by six. Tigers have led by as many as seven. Riverside has led by as many as eight. As Moore up top dribbling to his right. Ten on the shot clock. Moore cuts it back to his left. Drives into the lane. Puts it up with the right hand. No, the ball is loose. Controlled by down. Vereen. An offensive reba rebound. Should be a reset. Or it was 20 on the shot clock. That's the new rule. Yeah. You get 20 on the shot clock. It just looks a bit funky. And uh, now foul is going to be called on Riverside. You know, Moore can make those floaters. He has so much room, he can stop and just take a little eight-foot jump shot, too. I don't know if every shot has to be a floater. Uh, Wilborn fouled him from behind. That is the seventh team foul on the Highlanders. This will be one and one. With 2.07 to go in the second half. One and one for Jaleel Tripp. Well, you're up six with a one-on-one, -on -one and you just got to play good defense and take care of the ball and use your timeouts the proper way. Free throw is up and good, so Jaleel gets another. 54-47. So if the 
Free throw is made here. It would give the Tigers their largest lead of the day. Second one is up and good for Jaleel. 55-47 Pacific with 2.06 and counting to go in the second half. Our right to our left go the Highlanders. Pulling in the front court, chest pass up top to Elkaz. Now to the right side, it goes to McDonald and a whistle stops play as timeout's going to be called by UC Riverside. So 1.58 to go. I think this will be a 30. It is a 30-second timeout called by UC Riverside. So Coach and I will keep it here, and uh, if you're Riverside down by eight, a minute 58 to go, I mean, you've been down by eight with a lot less time and come back. Uh, what's, uh, what's David Patrick thinking here? Well, I think they're going to have to get the free throw line or shoot threes. You know, if you get the free throw line, you're going to stop the clock, and you can set up your press, maybe get a steal. But you're just going to you're going to have to be almost perfect this last two minutes. And the Tigers, number one, take care of the ball. If they don't turn the ball over, I don't see how they're going to lose this game. And number two, use the shot clock, but you still want to get a good shot. And, and But they have guys out there that can handle the ball and, and keep it simple. From the far sideline, Zion Pullen, who's had a whale of a game for UC Riverside, he will trigger it in. Inbound to Elkaz. Elkaz dribbling to his left, clumsily stops at the left elbow, takes a, fa a fadeaway jump shot that's no good at the rebound taken by Justin Moore. Tough shot there. He should have kept the, the dribble going and forced the foul. He's almost getting fouled on the drive. He should have kept that going and get, get the free throw line. Tigers have it across center court. Jaleel Tripp is bleeding some time near midcourt, under 100 seconds to go in this one. Tigers by eight, their biggest lead of the game. Tripp is going to have his pocket picked by Kai Cabellas. Cabellas one on one with Bailey. He's going to pull up for a left wing three, and it's short. Yeah, and the rebound taken there by There was an opportunity right there, you know, to get down. He turned it over and he survived one of them. Moore uh, with the bench screaming at him to get it across, and he does on the far left sideline, and he is going to be fouled by Zion Pullen. So now Riverside gets into the foul game with Funny, a minute that, 12 to that go. That one was pretty tacky compared to how they've been calling it lately. So one and one coming for Justin Moore. These or this, I shouldn't presume the second. This is Moore's first free throw of the game. It's up and it is no good. So missed the front end of the one and one. He's gonna have to make him this year because when you're a point guard, now pulling for three, it's no good. Well, Zion two Pullen threes. had a good look. If you think those two threes would be a two-point game, so that's how close it could have been. And Chevichian passes it to the far sideline to Moore, who has it across center court. 54.1 to go, and he'll be fouled. I think Tripp needs to get back there and handle the ball more than Chevichian. I mean, he did a nice job bringing it up and passing the ball, but he's more of a two-guard that didn't handle the ball. I think that's what uh, Sotomayor was screaming, get it to Jaleel, or get Jaleel back there. Well, Jaleel can't go hide. I mean, he's got to take responsibility going back there and help people bring the ball up. So Moore has a mulligan here. Coach T doesn't know about those. Free throw is up, and it's good. You never take mulligans. I've known that for a while. There's times I wish I had about five of them. 56-47, <laughs> Pacific by nine. Second one up and good. So 10 point lead for the Tigers, 57-47. Our right to our left, Pullen. Pullen into the front court, Pullen drives to the baseline. Pullen gives it out to Elkaz. Elkaz launches a three in the face of Tripp. He is fouled and he makes it. First of all, I don't know why he's open. You know I mean? What, you should be out there denying the ball to those guys, especially the three point shooters. It rattled around the rim and dropped through. So a chance at a four point play. I mean, play. they've had two wide open threes that they've missed, you know. So Elkaz, this is his first free throw attempt of the year. Well, he's a designated three point shooter, so 
it's up and good. He's a nice looking shooter, I tell you that. This is a tough sub right now. You know, Jenkins really hasn't played too much, and they're going to put him in at the end you know, of the game here to handle the ball. Now, they are putting him in for a big guy, not, a, not another guard. Jenkins checks in for uh, Jeremiah Bailey. So it's 57 51 Pacific, 44 and a half seconds to go. Pickett checks in for UC Riverside, and Elkaz comes out. So defense for offense. Jalil, we got three of them. Trip baseline left will be the inbounder, and Jaleel's going to call a timeout. They have three timeouts. Uh, I presume this is going to be a 30-second timeout. There's three timeouts the Tigers have. Usually they save the, uh, the full timeout for last. This is a 30-second timeout. A reminder that to Coach T and I will be back here on Tuesday. Is that two nights from now? Yep. Yeah, wow. Tuesday, Coppin State, 7 p.m. The opening tip, Coach T and I have the pregame coverage at 6.45. Last time the Tigers played Coppin State, Coach mentioned the last game was in Puerto Rico. Beat them? No, they, be, they were tough. Okay. They beat us. They were tough. Bang Mitchell was the coach, and he was the coach a long time there. I don't think he's still coaching. <laughs> he, but... If he is, it'd be great to see him. Yeah, well, we'll check on that. Uh, yeah, 7 p.m. opening tip. We'll have the pregame here on the radio and the W.TV. 57-51 Pacific, 44 and a half seconds to go. Trip looking to inbound, and Trip inbounds to Chavici on the baseline. Gary is being pressured, looking for an outlet. Gives it to, on the far side to Jenkins. Flings it into the front court to Jaleel Tripp. Tripp has it, and Tripp somehow gets a handle on it, goes up toward the bucket and puts it up. Didn't get it to go, but he does get fouled. That was a circus act. Yeah, that's kind of a lucky play. You got one over here, you barely get it in. You get over here, falling out of bounds. You just sling it up there. Tripp did a nice job going getting it, but they're, get, they're gonna have to get more organized and have some, you know, I always said it's not plays, but it's concepts, you know, that you, you can do different concepts at different times to get people you want the ball. And just, and Moore made one cut. You know, he made one cut to get open. Tripp missed the first one. I thought it was a one and one. He was shooting the ball. That's right, that's right, that's right. But he, he made one cut and he tried to post up. Where I want players to make three cuts. Make a cut, make another cut, and make another cut. Because you make the three cuts, you're gonna get open. If you make one cut and stand there and try to overpower people, it's going to be tough. Well, I think it was Jenkins who just flung the ball <laughs> well, he into did the front court. I mean, he had to, to because... And he did a nice job throwing the ball yes. away from the basket. Yes, he had to because it was going to be 10 seconds, too. Hey, you know, if you're going to make a mistake, throw it down the other end of the court. You know, throw it down the other end of the court. Mm -hmm. uh, they are checking... Oh, we're at the... Yes, yeah, because yeah. we're closer, yeah. Well, the boards one the video displays one out. It's uh, 30, 34 seconds on the shot clock. We had a play at the end of the game where there was one second to go in the game, and we were under our basket, and I I put a guy underneath that basket, I put a guy here and here, and a guy half court, and I just threw the ball over here. He made sure the ball didn't go out of bounds. And if they st stole the ball right there, I. Yeah, you can live with them. I don't want to turn the ball over underneath the basket or down right. that way where they can hit a shot. The video display is out. They're checking the time, 34 seconds. There's there the video display coming back. Um, so 34, the officials were checking to make sure the time was right. It is 34 seconds to go in the game. I think one, Tiger's going to have to make more free throw. I mean, Moore missed a one-on-one, Tripp missed a free throw. Those guys are going to have to make free throws, but they're the ones that are going to be up the line at the end of the game. But those guys played great coming down the stretch. They made some good big time plays. Second one for Trip is up and good. It rattles in. So 58 51 Pacific. Our right to our left, UC Riverside will advance into the front court, trailing by seven. It's Pullen. Pullen to McCray to Pullen. Pullen on the right wing is going to drive into the baseline and get rejected by Vereen. An emphatic rejection, clean block by Vereen with 23 and a half seconds to go in the game. Inbound by Pullen to McCray. 20 seconds to go. McCray chest pass up top to Pickett. He launches a desperation three. It's off the mark. The long rebound taken by Jaleel Tripp. 
from our left to our right. Triple advance into the front Good court. Hard win. And Riverside will not foul. So the Pacific Tigers, for the sixth straight time, defeat the UC Riverside Highlanders. This time it is by a final of 58 to 51. As coach said, a hard fought home win tonight for the Pacific Tigers and something on which to build as they look ahead to Coppin State on Tuesday. We'll talk about that and much more when we come back uh, for a happy edition of Pacific Courtside Live, which is coming up next. Our final score from the Alex G. Spano Center, the Pacific Tigers 58, the UC Riverside Highlanders 51. And we will come back and have Pacific Courtside Live for you after this on the Pacific Digital Network. Tiger fans, this is Janet Lucas, Director of Athletics at the University of the Pacific. The vision of Pacific Athletics is to be a program that's values-based and focused on the growth and success of our student athletes in the classroom and in the community. This life is built on the pillars of family, balance, innovation, and a winning spirit. Whether this involves winning championships or graduating seniors with a sense of purpose, we strive to represent and our community. With more than 300 student athletes studying in over 40 different majors, we are inspired and impressed every day by the academic achievement of our student athletes. Last year, Pacific student athletes once again enjoyed a banner year in the classroom, a 3.2. In addition, 60% of our student athletes were above a 3.0 cumulative GPA and 27% registered a 3.5 or better. At the conclusion of the fall and spring semesters, there were a total of 75 perfect 4.0 GPAs, while 21 student athletes maintained a perfect mark for the entire academic year. The graduation success rate of 93% is a testament to the unwavering commitment of our student athletes to their academics and future careers. On behalf of our student staff, thank you for supporting the Pacific Tigers and for helping us continue our mission of building champions for life. College students, college athletes, all conference, all academics, all Americans, champions. Together we are able to make an impact for over 300 student athletes who are able to rise to these levels through the power of our community's law. Together we are able to provide the resources to make a difference and build a future for Tigers who inspire us each and every day. Join the PAF today and become part of our Tiger family. For more information on the PAF and how you can help support Pacific student athletes, 2591 or check the website at www.joinpaf.org and join the uproar. Be a part of the uproar this season. Limited ticket packages for Pacific men's basketball are available now and are a great way to catch all the action in 2019-20. Can't make all the games? Call us at 209-946-2474 or go online to pacifictigers.com and learn about partial ticket plan options. It's the best way to catch all the best games at the lowest price. This is Damon Stoudemire, head coach of your Pacific Tigers. It's never too late to join the uproar. Season and partial ticket plans are available by calling my friends in the ticket office at 209-946-2474 or by going online to pacifictigers.com. We would love to count on your support this season. Buy your tickets today at pacifictigers.com or by calling the ticket office 209-946-2474. Tiger fans, check out PowerCat's brand new Tiger Cubs, the official kids club of Pacific Athletics. Kids receive free admission to select games, a Pacific Tigers fan package, and access to special events with many of our teams, all for the low price of just $20 per child for a one-year membership. Visit www.pacifictigers.com slash tigercubs today to sign up. This is Bradley Davis, head coach of your Pacific Tigers. Become part of our team today and support your women's basketball program by joining an elite group of friends, family, and supporters who are part of our inner circle, known as the Center Court Club. This is your opportunity to join our team and get insider access that will support the program to compete against and beat the best in the country. Join Center Court Club today and become part of the Tiger family by calling 209-946-2591 
or check the website at www.joinpaf.org. Pacific Courtside Live, a winning edition. Zach Bay Rudy, Coach T, Bob Thomason, glad to have you with us. Uh, the Tigers with a 58-51 win over a, a gritty UC Riverside team. Coach, I, we knew coming in that Riverside was going to try and, and play this game, you know, very slow tempo. They did. Uh, we knew the Tigers were going to have to run Riverside off of the three-point line. Uh, for the most part, they did. Uh, you know, we'll get we'll delve into the numbers here in a little bit, but uh, it's a good home win for Pacific. Yeah, I mean, at this stage of the game, every, every win, you want to win and we want to learn sure. and you want to get better. And uh, the team has ball control, but, but like the Tigers aren't a high-powered, fast-breaking and having a hard time scoring sometimes too. So you have two teams that don't score a lot playing each other, and both teams, I thought, played hard and played well within themselves, and the Tigers just made more buckets down the stretch. Well, let's delve into the numbers. Our City of Stockton Human Resources hardworking player of the game we will uh, talk with. Jaleel Tripp, who had 17 points. Really nice effort today uh, for Jaleel Tripp. 17 points on five of six shooting. He was one of one from beyond the arc, six of eight from the line. A complete effort, too. Seven rebounds, one assist, and uh, two steals for Jaleel. Uh, he needed a game like this, and, uh, and it came at a good time for the Tigers. Yeah, I thought he dominated the game, and he played played to his strengths. And he's kind of can do a lot of different things, and that's what he has to do every night, and find his niche and find out what – his skill can do to be affect that game because it might not be the same thing every night, and, and but he can he can have a great impact on the game. 17 points for Jaleel, 10 points for Justin Moore on four of 12. He was two of three from the line, five rebounds for Justin. He had seven assists. Uh, it's it's been a little while since I, I we've seen a Tiger player get seven. Assists. I'm trying to think of the last one. Uh, may have been Jaleel Tripp at some point. Well, you know, the Tigers haven't had a lot of assists over the last few years. Yeah. You know, they haven't had a lot. Tonight, having 13 assists and six turnovers is big for them, doubling up, you know, their their turnovers. And I thought he had a, a really good, nice floor game. He picked it up as the game went on, especially the second half. And maybe a couple floaters that didn't go. Or if you make a couple of those, you'd have a, a good offensive and a great, great night. When you look at Justin Moore, obviously he brings a good skill set to the table and you like his size at, at the point guard position. Uh, where can he? Where can he even get better than he is in your well, mind? Well, obviously he made a couple turnovers. One in the press early in the first half. He was surprised, threw the ball back. Uh, just getting smarter with his teammates, knowing how to get his teammates open. He made a big time play when he drove to the right side of the basket, stopped, and hit Vereen on the other side of the court. And I always think that's a big time play when you can throw the ball cross court to a guy for a wide open three, and he made the shot. So, I think uh, he's coming into his own. Uh, I think now after four or five games he should be pretty comfortable and he's one of those players you expect to play well every night uh, down the line for the Tigers nine points for James Hampshire on four of seven uh, five rebounds for James he had two blocks as well I really like what I'm seeing from James Hampshire. well his improvement is his confidence is getting better his aggressiveness is getting better uh, there they have him in a great role right now I think bringing him off the bench you know they, mm -hmm. they have two centers coming off the bench that that are, that are contrast to each the guys and with Amari making so many fouls you're gonna have to use them anyway and I thought he played a, a really a fantastic game tonight I thought they've done well uh, crafting plays to get the ball to him you know uh, close to the bucket I think they've they've had some some pretty good they've given him some pretty good looks I mean uh, even when they haven't gone in you know that he's had some good looks yeah absolutely and, and the more confidence he does the more he demonstrates making plays the more the coaching staff will throw the ball in there to him, and th his teammates will throw the ball in there mm -hmm. to him. So he did a nice job, but he plays without worrying about that stuff. He's not trying to do anything but help the basketball team, but you can see his development kind of flourishing. Gary Chavichian, six points on two of five, all from beyond the arc. Uh, five points for Austin Vereen on two of five. He was one of three from outside. Five points for Pierre Crockrell on two of four. He was one of two from the line. Four points for Amari McRae on two of five. We mentioned he was thwarted by foul trouble all all afternoon. I mean, he picked up two fouls uh, within the first four minutes, and uh, all the fouls that he picked up were 80-plus feet from the hoop. Well, two of them were, and then two of them were in the low post, guarding the low post. So what I'm, what I'm saying is that he's got to right. get smarter at that. I mean, he's got to get to the point where he can play without making those kind of fouls. And uh, he's going to have to if this team is going to be as good as they want to be. Uh, so McCray, uh essentially a non-factor in this game because of foul trouble, but he did have four points and then uh, 
Uh, two points for Brock Finstoon, who saw the floor for just under 12 minutes. Finstoon, one of five uh, from the floor. Uh, the Tigers in the first half, 39% from the floor, 11 of 28. Got much better in the second half. They were 11 of 23. Uh, same amount of makes, but just a fewer shots. Uh, for the game, the Tigers 22 of 51, 43%. From beyond the arc in the first half, the Tigers 3 of 7, 1 of 3 in the second half. Uh, you can live with 4 of 10 from outside, 40%. They were selective. Yeah, they, I think they need to be. I think they have some guys that are going to make threes. They're going to develop as the year goes on. But I don't think they're a high-powered three-point shooting team. And, and you want to do is take great threes. And if they continue to do that, they can shoot a good percentage. I thought Gary Trevickian tonight was really – stood out for them. Mm -hmm. He made two big threes early when they were behind and they helped catch up. But he played really good defense. He played with the group out there a lot in the second half, but he didn't force any shots, you know, and which he'd been kind of hunting for shots the first few games of the year. Today, I thought he did a great job. Uh, from the line, the Tigers need to find a way to get better. 10 of 17 from the line, and you know, they, they came away with the win today, but in a close game, that can really hurt you. And then the Tigers' uh, free throw percentage for the year uh, I meant to have this number handy, and I apologize that I don't, but I could probably pull it up right here and right now for the year. Uh, the Tigers are 60, 63% come into this game yeah. from the line. they got to so. get the 70% mark. Yeah. I always thought between 70 and 74% is really good. Um, but you got to get – and it depends who's getting fouled. I mean, are you, is your good free throw? But when Moore's missing them and Trist's missing at the end, those are the guys who are going to be fouled at the end of the game because they're going to be handling the ball, and they're going to have to get to the point where – you don't want to go up there going, man, I hope he makes his free throw. Mm -hmm. That's not a good sign. You want to get to the point where you know he's going to make those free throws, especially at the end. For sure. Uh, UC Riverside uh, led by true freshman Zion Poland, 4 of 7 from the floor, 2 of 3 from outside, 4 of 8 from the line. And he had 14 points in this game, and I was, I was impressed with the way the freshman played from Pleasant Hill. A absolutely. He played really good. He, he – you know, being a freshman, and he's a good athlete. He can make an outside shot. He drives the ball in there, and uh, he's going to be a good player. They have a couple. They have a couple nice pieces on this team, Coach. I, I like what Riverside's doing, where they're going. Absolutely, I, really do. I think the Coach is doing a great job coaching them. Uh, they've got them under control. Um, you know, the, if the big fellow would have had a good game tonight inside, they would have made this game right down to the wire. But he really missed the easy layup. He didn't really establish himself mm -hmm. inside scoring, McCray. and I think that hurt them. Uh, down the line, 10 points for Dragon Elkaz on 3 of 6. He was 3 of 5 uh, from beyond the arc and uh, 1 of 1 from the line. 9 points for uh, our friend Kai Cabellas tonight. Kai coming back to the Spano Center. There were times uh, early in the game you thought he might cut it loose. He was 4 of 10 from the floor, 1 of 5 from beyond the arc, and uh, Cabellas held uh, to nine points. How do you he, think he handled it? I thought he did a good job. You know, he did a nice job uh, playing tonight. Uh, he didn't just didn't do much the last 14 minutes of the game. I thought his first 20, 24 minutes was really good. Yeah. Well, let's uh, talk with our city of stocks and human resources, hardworking player of the game. That would be Jaleel Tripp. How you doing, man? How you doing? I was, uh, by the way, you were my call today during shoot around for player of the game. CP asks me and shoot around who's your call for player of the game. And I, you were my call. <laughs> Because uh, you uh, you were due, man. Uh, you were due for a performance like this, 17 points on the 5 of 6 shooting. Uh, what uh, what was the key to your success today? Um, I felt like I really got into a groove our last game here at home. Um, and I think I was just ready um, from practice. And I just felt like I, I felt good going into the game. And like I said, since the last game, I just felt good overall. And I feel like I really picked it up. And um, I found my, my groove with the new team that we have. I'm, I'm going to take away Thursday's game. It was, you know, it, it was a big win against an NAIA school, big yeah. in terms of margin. But uh, really, the last uh, the last Division One game was the Hawaii game, and we know how that ended. But how how tough was that for you as a senior on this team to absorb that loss? Um, that was a tough loss. Um, it reminds me a little bit of the San Fran loss, my um, yeah. sophomore year, first round up there in um, the West Coast Conference. But um, I think with this new team, um, I think we were right to take the hits and bruises now in the beginning of the season, so that way we could learn from it. And I think get, going down the stretch of the season, we're going to be a tougher team. And um, those type of things won't happen. Mm -hmm. Coach? No, I, I thought I'd take him as player of the game every night. You know, that's what he should be out there because he can do so many things. Yeah, he, he can, can rebound. He can pass. He can post up. He can go around people. Uh, his shot's really good. He can make a three, but he can really make those 15-footers inside. And, and he's just got to figure out how to take how the defense is guarding him and who's guarding him and how to make his teammates better and him better. And the combination of that, once he does that, and just play every night like 
I like it's your last game. Yeah. I think you're going to have a fantastic year. Yeah, thank you. I know they're playing you kind of all over the place this year, you know, more than just where you had to be at the point last year. Is there an area where you feel comfortable, a spot where you feel most comfortable? Um, I just wherever the team needs me to win. Um, that's all I really want to care. That's all I really care about. Um, I know the last two years I've been playing a point and uh, having the ball a lot of my hands and making a lot of plays. And um, this year we got a lot of good new players and a lot of other players can make plays too. So I think um, that helps me just be out on the wing a little more mm -hmm. and run the floor and get it, be able to get easy transition buckets. And I can still do what I want to do with the ball in my hand, make plays and stuff. But I think just me being out um, on the wing running is, is good for us. What uh, what does this win mean for you guys? I know you were desperate to have it, but does this give you a chance to build uh, now and moving ahead in this homestand, which is seven games long? Uh, definitely. Um, we heard that they went down to Nebraska, a Big Ten team, and won by about 20, so we yeah. knew they wasn't going to come in here and be any slouches. Um, coach told them we beat them last year, but it wasn't the same team, and we just got to come in there with the mindset every day that nobody – um, thinks we're going to win any games, and we just got to believe that we're the only people on the planet that believe we're going to win, and we come into the game with that mindset, and I think we could be anybody if we want. Do you guys still feel like you're, uh, how do I put this, like you're still gelling but getting better at the same time? Oh, most definitely. Um, practice is definitely intense and picking up and coaches on everybody just as if they was here for the last three years just like me, and um, I think him doing that is helping the new guys come along well because they – they know that he's expect a lot from them. So, like, if you have that expectation, then you know that coaches believe in you because the only time you, sh you should be scared is when the coach is not talking about you. If he's talking about you, that's a good thing because he wants you to get better. Mm -hmm. Is that right, Coach? <laughs> uh, yeah. And something, you know, <laughs> but I, I think this team is going to – they're going to have to develop their offense. I mean, they're not a great offensive team right now. I mean, mm -hmm. as far as how many guys. I, I think once they get four or five guys getting in double figures, you know, then their offense will blossom a little more. Um, they're playing a lot of guys still, and I think that'll calm down eventually. Um, but if they kick good shots, their defense is really good. Their rebounding is really good. And then tonight, they're, every time Riverside pressed a couple times early and they got some turnovers, and they got to be ready for those things. they got to handle that press a little better and take their time. And, mm -hmm. and matter of fact, I've always said the more you take your time handling that stuff, the easier shot you're going to get through the press. It's when you rush things to try to get down there and score is when you make the mistakes. And that's something the preseason is for. Yeah. And, you know, to go back and win a game, number one, is great. And then number two, what did we do well? And, and make sure that stays there. And what did what could we improve on? And let's go to work and improve mm -hmm. on those things because in two weeks you want to be a lot better. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Hey, Brooklyn, we go hard. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks, man. Appreciate you. Thank you. Jaleel Tripp, uh, kind enough to join us on Pacific Courtside Live. And uh, he is our city of stocks and human resources, hardworking player of the game with 17 points. Uh, I lost the stat line. 17 points, seven rebounds. That was the other big part of that stat line. He's a heck of a player. Yeah, he I is. Mean, I, I've always loved him since he's come here. And I just love guys that are strong and have a good heart and want to win basketball games. And uh, he's willing to do anything. And, um, I, I think sometimes he could do more, you mm -hmm. know what I mean? But you don't want to do things by forcing things either. Uh, we were in the middle of talking about UC Riverside and, uh, and Kai Cabellas, who had nine points. Uh, down the line, eight points for Callum McRae. Look, coming into this game, McRae averaging 13.7 and 9.3. And he had eight points and ten rebounds. He's a big guy. He's skilled. Uh, they run a lot for him. And for, for the Tigers to hold him on eight points – uh, to eight points on four of ten. I know he missed a couple of bunnies. I thought they did a good job uh, on getting into him a little yeah, bit. Yeah, well, you know, the Tigers have strength, you know, with two of their post guys, and they have length with one of the other post guys. So that's going to make it harder for big guys. Mm -hmm. But I was disappointed in just how he started the game. So we look lethargic to you? Not, I don't know about lethargic, but it was just like tentative in whether he could go in there and score on people. I would be disappointed on that if I was coaching and watching that just that game tonight. Mm -hmm. But I think he should go at people yeah. and try to get their free throw line and try to make shots. And then when they double them, then he can kick it out for some wide open shots. But he he's playing like, I'm not for sure if I can do this. Well, he had eight points and ten rebounds. It wasn't enough for Riverside tonight. And down the line, uh, five points apiece for Dominic Pickett on two of five and DJ McDonald on two of six. Uh, the Highlanders in the first half, <coughs> beg your pardon, 11 of 26 from the floor, 42%. Uh, the second half, they were just 8 of 28, so 29% if you round it up for the game. Riverside shot 
So second game really going back to the, the Sac State game that they've struggled offensively. Well, I think they, they have some limitations about how they can score, but they did have three or four really nice three-point shots that didn't go in where if those go in, it kind of opens things up. Um, and they're just going to have to find their offense, how to create shots for each other. Uh, I'm impressed with their team, even though it's young, and I think they're headed in the right direction. Uh, but I think they're going to have a hard time scoring all year. And so it's going to be about defense and having close games and winning close games. Uh, from beyond the arc, Riverside, 8 of 23, uh, 34%, 35 if you round it up. And then from the free throw line, they were 5 of 9. Uh, Pacific had eight points off of turnovers. Riverside had two. Uh, and taking a look at the the actual turnovers, uh, Riverside turned the ball over 11 times and Pacific turned the ball over six times. That's great. Oh, I mean, that's, that's phenomenal. Yeah, and I think that's one thing Pacific's done all year, take care of the ball. Um, and two of them were against on free throws, not being prepared for the press. But uh, that's something they're going to have to do, I think, because – they're not getting the offensive rebounds they used to get. Um, and they're not going to shoot the threes like most people will shoot. So if you take care of the ball, that can give you five, six, seven more possessions. And then you got to get that, that field goal percentage up to the 46 to 49, especially the two-point shots. You want to be shooting about 52% on two-point shots. And if the Tigers get that point, then that, now they're going to be a good offensive team that plays good defense also. Do you do you see in what they're what Pacific is running if, if there's a way for them to get better two point shots? Well, number one, take good ones. I mean, they're they're taking some floaters in there and they're taking some off balance ones. If you if you go through the game, there was probably seven or eight shots that you probably didn't need to take. Now, there, if you take a horrible shot, everybody knows that. Yeah. But there's shots that don't look that bad that aren't really good to winning. And if you could eliminate those shots and, and transfer those to seven good shots, now your percentage goes from 0-7 for those to 4 for 7 or 3 for 7, and all of a sudden that shooting percentage goes to 46%, 47%. It's a fine line because you don't want kids to play nervous or scared. You want to be confident, but confident in taking championship shots, shots that you can win a championship, mm -hmm. not win four or five games. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yep. And so that's something that you have to get better at. Uh Second chance points, uh, not many out there for either side. UC Riverside, three, Pacific, four. Uh, fast break points, Riverside, five, Pacific, six. And the bench uh, scoring was nearly even. Stephen Riverside had 19 points off the bench. Uh, Pacific had 20. There were uh, three ties. There were 14 lead changes in this game. 14 lead yeah, changes. Yeah, I mean, Riverside did a great job early getting the lead and staying there. Then, then for a while, it was back and forth, and Pacific finally had a little spurt to get ahead, and they maintained that. And, uh, look, those are tough games to win when you get back and forth like that. 14 lead changes, it's almost like almost like hot potato, Luke. Who's going to have the ball last or, you know, well, to get that situation? It didn't again, today, but it could. solid teams, it's going to be like that until they can score maybe 15 more points a game. Because I think if they can put in 15 more points a game, then their separation will get there. But as long as they're scoring 60, 64, 58, there's no way to separate yourself that much. So it's going to come down to – Close games, and how good are you executing close games? Uh, Pacific led for 18 minutes and 12 seconds in this game. Uh, Riverside led for 17.54. So the Tigers actually led uh, a few more seconds than did the UC Riverside. Uh, you can give us some insight on this. Riverside was picked to finish seventh in the Big West. I think with some of the stuff they run, some of the personnel they have, I think they can, they can do a little bit better than that. Well, you know, the Big West, you don't know what the Big West is yet. You know that Santa Barbara is going to be pretty good. I think Hawaii will be solid. Uh, Irvine. Irvine's off to a great start, mm -hmm. you know, so they're going to be good. Long Beach has played such a tough schedule. You don't know exactly what they are yet, mm -hmm. and you're going to figure that out as time goes on. Uh, Northridge is 0-5, but they've played a really hard schedule. Um, but their scores haven't been very good, so you don't know. They were picked high, but are they – Davis is not doing great. So I, I would think Riverside is going to be in that middle ground in the Big West. And it depends how many close games they win, whether they move up to fourth or they move down to seventh. Mm -hmm. you know, right in that and we're going to see a bunch of those Big West teams. I mean, we're going to go on the road to see Long Beach. Uh, Northridge is coming in. Uh, we'll go on the road to see Irvine yeah. late December. So it, it's we'll get a good sampling of what, what the Big West is all about. Yeah. And that should be, should be fun to see. Yeah. Uh, again, Zach Bayrudi, Coach T, and uh, awaiting the arrival of Damon Stoudemire here on Pacific Courtside Live. 
uh, as the Tigers defeat UC Riverside by a final of 58-51. to 51. Uh, A reminder that our next broadcast will be on Tuesday, the Tigers and Coppin State. 7 p.m. our opening tip. Our pregame coverage begins at 6.45 uh, here on the radio and the W.TV. And also want to remind you once again that uh, Boise State coming in next Saturday. Actually, it's this Saturday, right? Yeah, it's Sunday. So this Saturday, Boise State coming in. It's going to be a cool game. Got uh, Coppin State Tuesday night. Don't forget about them. Oh, no, 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 no. But I, I was, I was now. I'm not forgetting about I would never forget One about Coppin State. One game at a time. I, I did want to remind the fans, though, that for, for the Boise State game, first 250 fans get a Tigers water bottle courtesy oh. of 209 Furniture. So a uh, Tiger water bottle giveaway to the first 250 fans that come to the Boise State game on Saturday. Uh, that'll be a 4 p.m. matinee. And the Coach T and I will be on the air at 345 for that game. But, uh, no, we're not overlooking Coppin State, 7 p.m. on, on uh, Tuesday. And that'll be a nice uh, uh, nice breather between Tuesday and Saturday to get ready for Boise State. Uh, and, again, scheduling-wise, those, uh, those are hard home games to get, you know, games like Boise State and New Gym. That's uh, it's a good well, game. Well, you went there last year. Yeah, those, those are the kind of games you should play every year. Yeah. You know, you're not going to play them for a lot of time, but uh, – you know, maybe a four-game series and then transfer someone else. But, you know, hopefully the Tigers are going to get Fresno State and maybe Nevada back on the schedule. I, I think those are always good games for them. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm not a problem with Davis or Sac State either. I mean, I, I just think sometimes fans can go up there, you know, an hour drive and, and watch a road game. And mm-hmm. oh, uh, I agree. You know, I those are things that I always thought it was kind of important to do. But sometimes you don't have control over that either. Everybody's trying to save on, uh, you know, they talk about saving on travel, too. I mean, that's the, easy, that's the easiest way to do it. Uh, taking a look at scores from around the WCC, only one other WCC team is in action today, and they are just underway in Moraga. Cal Poly is out to a 10-2 to lead on number 18, St. Mary's. So the Mustangs off and running, 10-3 to now. But uh, uh, that game going on right now in Moraga. St. Mary's was picked by 25 and a half points. Was that the line in that game? <laughs> Gosh. I mean, that's a lot of points. Uh, the WCC is totally off tomorrow. And then on Tuesday, uh, of course, Pacific is playing uh, against Coppin State at seven other games. UT Arlington uh, will visit to Gonzaga. That is a campus game in the, bat- in the battle for Atlanta. So it's like that MTE deal where Arlington goes to Gonzaga. That's not being played in the Bahamas, but it's a campus game. Uh, Gonzaga ranked number eight in the country. Pepperdine at USC. That'll be at 6 p.m. on Tuesday. Uh, Santa Clara will host uh, Notre Dame de Namur, and Cal State Bakersfield will visit the 4-0 San Francisco Dons. That'll be at 7 p.m. on on Tuesday. Have you got a chance to watch uh, a sampling of the WCC outside of Gonzaga, St. Mary's, and Pacific, of course? Uh, not a lot yet. Um, you know, you'll start watching them on TV here pretty quick. And then when they get into league, I like watching league games a lot more than I do preseason games. Um, but – We'll find out. What do you got against preseason games? I, I think I think the schedules are so like lopsided sometimes, and then some of the games aren't on TV that you want to watch. You know, uh, so yeah, it'll be interesting. I think you know, you know, St. Mary's, USF seem to be pretty solid teams. Pepperdine seems like they've improved a little. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, Gonzaga obviously. I watched BYU when they. I think they were they were winning a close game at home. I, I watched the end of that game the last four or five minutes, and then they had a great win to go to Houston. I mean, yeah. Calvin Sampson's teams are always tough. Yeah. Uh, so that was a great win for them. Um, but I, I think in the in the WCC it'll be competitive. You know, Lila Merrimont, you're not for sure exactly what they have. And San Diego's off to kind of a rough start, but I think they've played a real tough schedule too. So uh, I think sometimes you have to see who has injuries and who has sickness and – and sometimes you get slapped in your face, and it kind of really gets your team to be motivated to improve. And so, uh, but it should be fun. I mean, WCC is always competitive, except for Gonzaga. You know, they yeah. have not been over over the years. You know what yeah. I mean? And they, they number one, have great players, and they have a great coach, they have the great system. So the combination of all that makes it pretty tough on everybody. Yeah, it makes it pretty tough to beat. Let's take a breather. We are uh, awaiting the arrival of Damon Stoudemire here to Pacific Courtside live to the table. So Coach T and I will take a quick breather, and uh, we'll be back. Hopefully uh, Damon will be joining us here on the Pacific Digital Network. Be a part of the uproar this season. Limited ticket packages for Pacific men's basketball are available now and are a great way to catch all the action in 2019-20. Can't make all the games? 
Call us at 209-946-2474 or go online to PacificTigers.com and learn about partial ticket plan options. It's the best way to catch all the best games at the lowest price. This is Damon Stoudemire, head coach of your Pacific Tigers. It's never too late to join the uproar. Season and partial ticket plans are available by calling my friends in the ticket office at 209-946-2474 or by going online to PacificTigers.com. We would love to count on your support this season. Buy your tickets today at PacificTigers.com or by calling the ticket office 209-946-2474. Coach T and I are back uh, inside the Alex G. Spano Center. And
more balanced in their scoring, and uh, if they continue to do that. And there's guys that are on this team, like Bailey can score some points, and, you know, they can score. They just got to give them time to figure all this out and, um, because they need about 10 more points a game, you know, to, to, to average mm-hmm. because then their defense will separate the score because they don't want to go down 55-55 every game they play, and now you relate on whether a free throw goes in or someone banks one in on you. So, Well, your family's waiting for you. Let you get out of here. We'll okay. do this again in 48 hours, all right? Okay. Coach T, thanks so much. And, uh, again, it's been great to have you today uh, for everybody involved in Pacific Athletics. Uh, for the Director of Athletic Media Relations, Rebecca Sharman, Michael January, his entire outstanding video crew, my partner, the great Coach Bob Thomas and Zach Bay Rudy, saying good night from the Spano Center here in Stockton. Again, our final score, Pacific 58, UC Riverside 51. We'll see you Tuesday night back here for the Tigers in Coppin State on the Pacific Digital Network. So long, everybody.